Tick tock, time to rock. I do believe we're live. Historically, yeah, I've had historically I've had problems when I have two people live simultaneously, but we've been trying to uh, troubleshoot that a bit. Just want to look down here to see when we actually pop up to make sure we're all here. All right, I see Adam with a drink. What are you drinking? What is that? Energy drink? Yeah, man. Uh, Bing, Bing, Chris. Bing. I drink Bing's too. Yeah, it's pretty tough. It's yeah, pretty yeah, tough. yeah. They make I'm little, trying to get off the Red Bulls, man. Yeah, they make the Bings make uh, they make little uh, shots like uh, like five hour energy too. Yeah, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yep. That. Mm -hmm. um, Never heard of it. All right, everyone, Never let's do a me. let's do a quick uh, audio check right now. Let me uh, check my vault, uh, guys. We'll all just talk in turn. Um, hello, everyone. I'm just looking at the audio right now, making sure that everyone is basically at the the same level audio wise, because um, I have two guys on by Skype and it's giving me one readout. So I just want to check everyone here. And uh, all right, so there's that. All right, Adam, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself in case anyone doesn't know you. I mean, who doesn't know me, man? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a worldwide phenomenon. I'm like <laughs> like the Ric Flair of apologetics over here. No, nah, man, what's going on, y'all? This is uh, you know, Adam Coleman of True ID Apologetics. That's T-R-U-I-D Apologetics. Uh, your hometown hero and uh yeah definitely check me out on my channel man i've been doing this for, uh, for a couple of years now and uh you know it started out with a podcast i was heavily rebuked by vocab and and david and david wood to get into the video game <laughs> video podcast <game>, whatever <laughs> <laughs> oh man whoa yeah in the podcast game you're either joe rogan or you're like some super old dude or whatever you know it's, it's, it's one or the other so <laughs> i was in no man's land but yo know, I'm, I'm i'm on these videos now man i'm, I'm on the come up as a matter of fact uh, as of last night, man, um, I might have got to. I might be at four thousand, man. I'm, I'm getting up there. Man. Are you at four thousand? Yeah, I might. Hey, I think so. Hey, you'll you'll have to do something. Uh, you'll have to do something special for uh for five thousand. If you, it, I mean, it, yeah, you. Th those are your milestones, right? You got your five thousand. I mean, you got your one thousand. You already passed that, but uh, you got your five thousand. Right. That's a milestone. Should do something fun. Um, your ten thousand. That's a milestone. Then your twenty five. Then your fifty. Then your hundred, and then you can kind of toss them in. Yeah. I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. I'm, I'm at thirty nine seventy five, so I need twenty five of y'all. I'm saying to hop on and you know, give me to that four K mark, but I'm happy to be here, man. Part of the Flutane Clan. Yeah, and um, uh, yep, and both Adam and John's channels are uh, there's links to those in the description box. John McRae, tell us who you are. Yo. Tell us who Yo. you are. What you doing? My name is John. I run the channel called What Do You Meme. I don't know why my video quality is so messed up right now, though. I was trying to fix it, but. You guys have to bear with. But yeah, I run the channel called What Do You Meme? And basically, I just respond to anti-Christian memes, videos, and slogans and do a lot of uh, commentary on culture as well. So that's about it for me. And uh, John, John, you just went full time right before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crazy time. You know what sucks? So in case anyone doesn't notice, I've been telling John for a while. Man, just quit your job. Go full time, man. Go full time. Heck with that. Once you're cranking out stuff left and right, you got all these videos. Uh, people, just from experience, I know if you're cranking out tons of content, because uh, that's a decision I had to make, right? I mean, I finished my school. I got a PhD. There is a strong inclination to get a nice, comfortable job that you know is nice and safe. There's that. There's that inclination to go, man. All I have to do is put out the applications. I get this job. I have to teach a few classes per semester. I have to, you know, grade and, and go in and teach. But I, I love going in there and t I don't love the grading. I hate the grading. But I love being in the class and uh, talking about philosophy and stuff like that. So, gosh, I could do that and get paid for it and be safe. But if I do that, I can't be doing much YouTube because I'll get in trouble for it. I'll get in trouble unless I'm just being very nice and just doing like philosophy videos or something like that. But if I'm doing what I'm doing now, I'm going to be in trouble, uh, uh, you know, you know, working there. And so I just had to say, I, nope, I believe it can be done. I believe, I believe, because <laughs> what was I the first one? Was I the first full time like YouTube apologist? I, I, can you guys you think, another? I think so? Yeah, probably. You might be. Yeah. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah, probably the first. Yeah. yeah so I, I, so. I, I, ba I basically said I have no evidence that this could actually work, but I'm going to do it anyway. But John, you should try it. But yeah, yeah. Follow I'm gonna, me as I follow David. I said, I'm, I said, I'm going to burn all bridges. I'm going to make it. By the way, guys, j just so you know, some of the some of the more, uh, you know, um, not sure what to call them. Um, some of the more radical views I made historically, part of that was I'm going to make this video so that no one would ever hire me. That way I can't even consider that an option, right? So I'm going to put, part part of the reason I'm putting on my wife's nighty for this video is 
I know I, can, I know I will not be able to work after that, right? I mean, uh, really, I think I could. I think I could get away with it. But in my mind at that time, I was thinking, uh, I was thinking, nope. What dude, can I do to make myself entirely untouchable? Untouchable so that, so that the only option, the only option is making killer videos on YouTube. So anyway, so I did that, and it actually, it actually worked. I was able to See, go no. full time. One of my homeboys, though, he uh, tattooed his face and everything like that because he said he was going to make it in music, and then he never did. So now he's working construction, which he doesn't want to do, but it's only job. <laughs> he can get yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> see same kind of thing yeah it didn't work out <laughs> no it so, didn't work out man <laughs> so any so anyway i i think i was the first dude now there's now there's several now there now that now there are several people who are just full-time youtube apologists this is what they do and it's, it's just awesome to have you know sites where you can be crowdfunded where all the people watch your videos can chip in a dollar or five dollars a month or something like that so anyway i've been telling john for like the what a year and a half two years something <laughs> yeah. like that you could do it man you could go full time screw that job quit that job man <laughs> just 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 burn all that burn all those bridges just work and i mean just work at the, work at youtube right and so uh john finally does it and then coronavirus hits <laughs> and now and now and now like he, the next week <laughs> yeah he he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't quite at what he needed to survive, but he was getting close and he's like, ah, but if I just go full time now, you know, I'll be able to, I'll be able to get there. I'll be able to get there. And then coronavirus hits when everyone's scrambling and everyone's scrambling to save their money. And so now John, you're, you're screwed, buddy. Uh, tell you, <laughs> yeah, thanks, look, do, do not, don't listen to me, dude. Don't listen to me. You should have kept your job and then you wouldn't be allowed. You wouldn't be allowed to go to work and you'd be getting paid right now to not work and do YouTube. See that. Wait, 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 wait a minute. So, so did David Wood just give a whole testimony about being the, the source of John's financial ruin is that what yeah was? exactly yeah. yeah yeah he just gave a testimony, it's a second yep. testimony video. but all goes south we know who to blame we know who to blame yeah because now everybody's scrambling to keep their money and all that too because everybody's losing work and stuff so everybody's losing support too so it's like the worst time too but it's all right thanks to David Wood you know so it's all his fault great job Dave what else can I say but you're welcome <laughs> Um, oh, yeah. So anyway, the side note of that is, uh, guys, um, help out whoever you can. And by that, I, I, I don't mean me. I mean the people around you. You know, uh, I mean everyone all around the world. Uh, some people are going to be better off, right? Like, like, like me. I'm better off because I'm I'm online and I can still be doing what I'm doing. I'm better off than people whose entire ministries are like going around speaking, right? People yeah. who whose income depended on going around speaking at lots of places and stuff like that, they're going to be in trouble for the next couple of months. So if you know someone like that, be be thinking about them. This is going to this is going to hit. Yeah. In other words, it's going to hit me uh, less than it hits lots of people, but uh, people all over the world are going to be in those kinds of situations, right? Some people um, like, like if, if you're retired, right? You're, you know, you still got, you, you still have the same income coming in. So, so you're not affected. If you had to go to work every day and you were barely scraping by, um, these, the, you know, the, the, these times could be hurting. So those of you who are, who are, who are doing well, and you're not really going to be impacted by this, make sure, you know, you're looking around for people that you, you can always, uh, you can always help. And those, those of you who are in parts of the world where you're doing well, uh, right. You know, think about John McRae if you can, because he's 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 going to be losing some supporters who and that's completely understandable. If you ever have to choose between donating to us and feeding your family, by all means, feed your family. So th there are that's going right. to be there are going to be people who are struggling, at least for the next few months. And so yes, uh, right. it's perfectly it's perfectly understandable that, uh, you know, uh, you know, support's going to drop and stuff like that. So those of you who can uh, think about John McRae again, just went full time on the advice of a super genius. Well, I'm just glad I didn't follow your footsteps and and wear a dress. So maybe I could still get a job. <laughs> you got to do that. Go, go wear that. Go wear that. <laughs> hey, you got to uh, go all in, man. You got to commit, brother. You commit. <laughs> Lean into it. Yeah. Um. So, uh, uh, John, I just put up a comment by Aiden. Remember Aiden? Yeah. What up, Aiden? Yeah. Good to see you, my man. Yeah. We we uh me and uh me and Adam talked to him a little bit uh yesterday here on on uh on the show but uh yeah guys remember uh if you weren't here yesterday aiden's a guy we uh we went up to <laughs> went up to new york for our, for a conference with frank turek and we uh vocab wanted to just roll up on uh on uh, the hebrew israelites up there in harlem and aiden's like i'll come and uh <laughs> so we're like you, you you sure man you know what we're getting into and uh nope, he, ro he rolled right up in there so yeah that's uh about that life man yeah He's ready at all times man smart kid smart kid yeah <laughs> Uh, John Buckley said, David, whatever happened to Randy? So that's Randy from a uh, guy I talk about in my Christian. I talk about my testimony video. Randy's still locked up. That guy had 21 felonies. Uh, he had 21 yeah. felonies. So Randy's still locked up. We send him money every, every month. About a, about a month and a half ago, uh, 
someone contacted me and said, David, can you, uh, can you uh, tell me how I can get a hold of Randy? I want to send him some money. And I was like, sure. So I, I gave him uh, Randy's contact. And, uh, and then I heard from Randy. I said, hey, this guy started, this guy started uh, sending me letters and stuff like that and you know, sending me money, say hi and stuff. And I was like, oh, that, that's cool. So, yep, so Randy's still locked up. He goes up for parole every year, but uh, he goes up for parole in Virginia, and they're just not inclined to let people go. Might change with coronavirus. They might want to start letting people out. But, yeah, Virginia is kind of notorious for not letting people out even like months, months early. Uh, so, yeah. Um, oh, hey, hey, Benjamin Handelman said, I also try to give John... All of my money, Benjamin. Don't give, uh, yeah. don't do not give John. Yeah. Do not give John all of your money. All of your money. Yeah. <laughs> no. And and in his pi- in his picture, he's he's he, he's, he's in sleeping a, in his car. He's in a military outfit, and he's <laughs> and he's and he's there with his wife. No, spend some of your money on your wife, guys. All, <laughs> yeah. all, only 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 support only support us if you just you know you 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 have you have you have extra money. Other than that, don't real, don't, guys, don't, yeah. don't don't yeah. support us. Don't, don't support go us. broke. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let, let, I'm gonna let you guys speak for yourselves, man. Support me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have one dollar to eat and feed your family. <laughs> screw that. Send it to send it to Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. I need it all. Hey, uh, hey, who, hey, who, who'd you say MJ Jackson is? You said you know MJ Jackson. Oh yeah, that's my homeboy, man. Uh, MJ Jackson. He's got uh, the Urban. Um, I always. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I always mess up the name, but it's the, I think it's the Urban Christian Institute. Oh yeah. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Uh, he's got a lot of dope material, man, particularly on uh, the, the group of um, we run into called Comedics. Is those people who kind of base their philosophy or spirituality around Egypt. And so he's got a lot of great material on that, does some book reviews and things like that. So, you know, people have should you, definitely uh, subscribe to him. Have you had him, uh, have you had him uh, live with you? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hey, MJ. Hey, MJ that's Jack. on MJ, man. You know, call him out, bro. He should have been on my on my channel, man. Call, you know, this, that slacker. Call him out. Call him out. Hey, M- he's, a, hey. he's a smart dude, man. Smart dude. Hey, MJ Jackson, tell us what your uh, internet connection is like. Just go to Google, type in speed test, and then click run speed test, and it's going to give you two numbers. Tell us what those two numbers are, and if you want to go live uh, to uh, see, this is this is this is how I work. By the way, it's a, it's a vouching system, right? Someone just someone just told me one day, hey, uh, you know, uh, Adams Adams cool, Adams smart. You should uh, you should uh, you should uh, you should get at you know you should get Adam on something, right? That was me. So, yeah, well, no, that was you and vocab and someone and else and someone yeah. else at a at a philosophy conference. Uh, so so multiple people all told me the same thing. But yeah, we have a. Uh, yeah, it's similar to the mafia. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna get in, like someone's got a vouch for you. Hey, I know this guy. You know, and he's he's a stand up guy, right? So, um, right. <laughs> anyway, if Adam's vouching for you, MJ, then uh, then uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, you I, I put my out. name on MJ, man. I, yeah, I vouch for him for sure. He's a, he's that dude. <laughs> What you, is he talking trash in the chat? He, he, no, no, no. Benjamin Handelman oh, yeah. talking trash. He said, uh, "John's joining the live stream from 1996 because he's talking about." He's talking about <laughs> I don't know what happened. On my end, it looks really clean. I don't know he what called, happened. He called it through AOL. On my on my side, it's really clean. Yo, do you, do you remember when you, do you remember when you were trying to adjust the settings and stuff late earlier? Maybe you actually did them and it didn't until you like went back on there. Maybe it didn't. Uh, you know what I mean? Nah. No, it didn't. Like filter. Oh, you I don't think so, man. Years. No, I just try to switch it over, so I don't know what happened. No, you just got some. Uh, you just got some garbage connection, man. That's lame. I wonder if I should hang up and then try to call back in. You think it let me in? No, do not mess with. Oh yeah, if I hang up, it'll kick us all off, huh? No, actually, you just went clear for a second, so I think it's an internet thing. Yeah, and by the okay. and by the way, uh, for real, uh, audio is the most important thing. We hear you clearly, so yeah. that's good. Yeah, good, yeah, good. yeah, you can hear the audio. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, all right, and guys, just so everyone knows, we're just doing a, a sort of, uh, uh, we titled this Live Hangout, so we're just basically going to hang out, chat with everyone there. Guys, uh, anytime you see a comment you want to respond to, uh, just just jump in there. So we're not we're not really doing apologetics. If someone has questions about apologetics, we're happy to answer them. But uh, yeah, we're basically just thinking about people out there who are stuck and quarantined, and you don't, you don't want to be quarantined too long and not have any human contact. Now, for me, that's like my dream come true, right? No one in my face. <laughs> leave me, a, leave, me yeah. alo- leave me alone with some books and a uh, video camera. I can make some YouTube videos. Other than that, uh, I'm fine. Lock me in. I mean, I could be in a, you know, eight by six cell. I'm, I'm good for, for oh, years. Like I'm inter- fine. This, this you used to that, huh? dream right here, man. Yeah, <laughs> right here. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you spent uh, more years in, like that, huh? Eight yeah. by well, six? Well, that, that was that was like the first year and some change after that was uh uh, was in dorms, big 88 man dorms or uh, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, 40, yeah. 40 man dorms, stuff like that. And so you're a bunch of people. 
Uh, then you miss then you yep. miss that cell. Then you miss that cell because uh, some people stay up all night playing cards. It wasn't until I got out. I got out and I went to sleep. And and then I woke up like 10 hours later. And I, I, and I was like, what? I, I had gotten used to being woken up repeatedly throughout the night and going, at, going back to sleep just because there's always, there's always noise. There's always noise. So I had become, after five years of that, I'd become completely used to it to where... I did. I mean, I I did, I'd forgotten what it was like to just sleep in 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 quiet and stuff. So, gosh, gotcha. um, yeah, yeah, I'm introverted, so, so man. You, so I, you know how like people play like white noise, you know what I mean, to kind of help a baby go to sleep. Like, do you play like prison noise in the background? Like, do you, you know people like clanking on the bars? <laughs> like, I, I'll tell yeah. I, I'll tell you what. This I don't know. I I think it's interesting. Um, I would try to. So I didn't really start reading a lot until. I was locked up, right? And there's there's nothing else to do. I'd read, you know, I I I'd, I'd read some before, but I didn't read a lot. Like sit around, you know, four, five, six, eight, ten hours a day reading. I started that when I was locked up, and I start, you know, reading all the classics, and then I get into, you know, you know, start reading the Bible every day for several hours, and then get into like apologetics, always reading, uh, but it's always noisy. And then so years, you know, th- then I get out and I go to college, and I realize I can't, you know, I I. It, I it's a struggle to focus on reading, right? And I'm like, why, why can't, why can't I sit here and, and focus on this reading? And then I started noticing when I be on the train on, on the subway in New York, riding through the Bronx, I'm on the train. All of a sudden, I can read much more rapidly and be much more focused. And it took me a while mm. to, and I just realized it's because there's this constant background noise, and that's that's how I like started reading a ton. And so it gets to the point oh. where it gets to the point. I'm like, you know, when when I'm in like dissertation mode and stuff like that. And I'm like, gosh, I can't get anything done today. My, and my wife would go, just just go get on the train, ride it to the end, get a bunch of reading done, ride it on the way back, get a ton of reading done. Then you get back and write, and you got all your reading done stuff. So she'd actually tell me, she she knew by then, just go go smart, go get on smart. the train. I know you'll 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 read faster. So yeah, that is um, yeah. That's a. Hey, I got a question. It just kind of made me think about something. Like I'm, I'm kind of in interview mode right now, but I mean, it's just fascinating. So like, at what point? Did you kind of realize like, yo, I'm like, I'm kind of on the track of doing something that's like bigger than myself. You know what I mean? Like, at what point? Okay, like I've got, you know, I've had this experience in prison, and you know, I'm getting into the ministry. Like, at what point was like, oh snap, like this is like a real thing. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, like, what you... point, like, like, when the light bulb goes off, it's like, oh, like I'm actually going to like be full time ministry. Like, I'm headed in the, on this path toward ministry. Um. Yeah, no idea. Um, it was it was somewhere along the way. It was because you know I went to school. I became a biology major. Um, uh, so I was doing biology, and then I was required to take philosophy. And then I started, uh, and then I realized I, I'm more interested in philosophy than I am in biology. But I'd already, you know, I'd, I'd already completed like most of a biology degree. So I was like, okay, I'll do a double major. So I'll do biology and philosophy. Uh, finished all that, and then Nabil. I think I was planning on teaching. I think for a long time I was planning on becoming like a philosophy professor after that. And just, I, you know, I teach and then maybe do a little apologetics on the side or something like that. And then, you know, ended up going around speaking a lot with Nabil early on after his conversion. So I was doing that. But I think, I think, I think up until, you know, I got really hooked on, on doing YouTube. I think before that I'd, al- I'd always planned on being a professor and doing apologetics on the side. And I'm not sure when, at some point it was just, no, I believe I can reach way more people with the technology available to me than I can speak into, you know, classes of 20 to 30 students. And right, so right, right. I, I, I think it was, yeah, it was somewhere around there. Dope. That's dope. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, uh, gosh, same question, I, I, yeah, I'm not seeing too many. And, and, the, so, yeah. and the angel Gabriel came and told me that I was going to be an apologist. That's that's kind of how it, <laughs> how it happened for me. But in your bedroom? We don't, we don't have to get into that right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah saint dennis said what's the topic of the show it's whatever it's whatever you guys want it to be saint dennis we're just here again we're here to chat with people um <laughs> hey actually look fred, fred sanford said uh can we get the jihadi tears from your merch store now guys i was just joking yesterday because i was sitting here and it was like it was like a couple minutes before we we're starting and i i was I didn't have I didn't have a couple I didn't have a cup of water I had a gallon jug of water which is what I've been I'd been drinking out of. and so I was like man I'm gonna look like an idiot drinking out of this gallon jug let me write and I, but I had a sharpie right here so I was like let me write let me write jihadi tears on it but then afterward afterwards I was like well that would be cool on a cup too right to just be sitting there with a you know if you just have a mug so uh, yeah Fred Sanford I think I'm just gonna make a mug 
for my store. It says Jihadi Tears, and then anyone who wants the Jihadi Tears <laughs> uh, Jihadi That's Tears you. mug can uh, Yo, can have that. Uh, What's up, Adam? Have you watched all the Islamicize Me? I oh, know. Not all. I haven't. You watched probably all. haven't. Oh, you haven't. Seen, uh, you're slipping. Because there, there was like a couple. I, I watched like several of them, and there was like a couple episodes. I don't. I don't know how I, I missed it. You know what I'm saying, but I, I feel like I missed a couple in the middle. Oh yeah, yeah. See, yeah. he's not even watching our stuff, Wood. What do you say about that? That's why he's an amateur, man. If he'd watch that, he'd be he'd be owning this internet thing right now. <laughs> genius. I'd be a YouTube genius, right? Hey, there. A- yeah. actually, uh, I I offered uh, I offered. He still hasn't given me his official answer yet, but I offered uh, I offered Adam the role of the angel Gabriel in. Muhammad meets the angel Gabriel, right? So, so Muhammad's gonna sit down. He's gonna say, "Who are you, sir?" And he's like, "I'm the angel Gabriel." He's like, "What? You're not the angel Gabriel? The angel Gabriel has horns and he's red and he has this creepy tail and he always chokes me." And so, so then, then Adam, aka the angel Gabriel, will be like, "That's Satan, you moron!" He's like, "What? Satan's a black man." As I say in Ibn Asak, Satan's a black man, right? And so, uh, so anyway, so, so that would be the beginning. But then, well, hey, go- you know, I, I think I convinced my wife to let me do it, man. Oh yeah, I think we're good on that. Oh, that would yeah, be do- yeah. that would be dope. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I, Adam. I, I agree to keep it on the tamer end of things that won't get that's le- that are less likely to get you killed. <laughs> It won't give me. It won't be give me stabbed or shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it comes to getting killed, we'll keep vocab in front. Right, right, right. He's like our shield, our body shield. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't worry, vocab will get. He'll get it first. Yeah, vocab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, I was wondering because I watched back. Uh, Wait, what do you got? I watched back like half of Islamicize Me a couple weeks ago, and it's funny. So if you guys haven't seen it, you should watch it. Just search Islamicize Me. It's a series that we did. Me, Wood, and vocab. It was fun. <laughs> Oh yeah, someone someone post the uh, link to Islamicize me. Yeah, guys, it just, and and people people don't know, but um, uh, um, that was ba- that that was based on a true story, right? Yeah. Vocab had a friend who um, was a convert to Islam and died while trying to kill Robert Spencer and Pamela Geller in Texas. So the uh, the idea of the series is you've got these three guys. And by the way, it was it was it was three guys. One of them sort of dropped out of the plan at the last second. So two guys went and tried to kill everyone. They got killed uh, trying to storm the place. And um, yes, yeah, so we made a video about three guys who convert to Islam. But instead of, you know, just going with the normal stuff they tell you, we actually had these guys go through the Muslim sources and start trying to live everything. And. Basically, by the end, they were so messed up and sick from all the diseases they caught from actually, uh, you know, following Muhammad's commands that, you know, they were basically passing out before they could ever go on a killing spree. And so, so anyway, that's, uh, that was a fun, fun. Series. Yeah. And Robert. So this is. Yeah, this is why it's dope. Robert Spencer's in it. Right. Um, like he was saying, and Robert <laughs> Spencer, a few times he people have tried to kill him and he survived. He was poisoned in. Uh, where was he in? um you uh, the UK or whatever he was poisoned and stuff still lived and so in the series we actually give him like superpowers where like the jihadis try to kill him and he has these superpowers so he can't die <laughs> he's yeah. doing all this crazy stuff it's pretty dope oh but so. by the by the way so this is this is funny sort of a uh, behind the scenes stuff for people who've watched Islamicize me um, uh, for that that was because vocab wanted a rewrite I had initially planned it as no. A sort of spoof on this is before your time, John uh, Adam. You might you might recall there was a movie in the eighties called The Untouchables, with uh, oh, with with Sean Connery and Kevin Costner. And uh, there's a scene where a do an assassin uh, there and a, one of Al, Al Capone's assassins shows up to kill Sean Connery, who's a police officer, and he's following him around the house. He's got a knife and he's just and he's following him around. And he right when he gets up to him about to stab him, Sean Connery turns around with a shotgun and goes, "Don't ever bring a knife to a gunfight." And uh, and so, and matter of fact, I think it was just like a something, yeah. some derogatory term, just like a such and such brings a knife to a gunfight. And yeah. then so the guy runs and then he dies. Anyway, I was going to have a jihadi, th- these us, the jihadis, we're going to show up to kill Robert Spencer, but we got knives. And then he turns around with a gun and says, uh, just like a jihadi brings a knife to a gunfight. And then uh, we take off running and vocab's like, no, I don't think it's good to threaten people with a gun on here and stuff like that. I was like, what can I do? Uh, we were, I don't know, we were brainstorming or something like that. We're like, wait, let, let's make, let's give them the ability to like force choke people and stuff like that. So that's how we came up with the, uh, the magical, <laughs> the magical version of Robert Spencer. Hey, I think we got like a real wrestling fan in the chat here. Somebody asked, uh, well, first I think they're referring to, uh, they said something about Halal Hogan. 
your boy Sam Shamoon, and they were like, there's a spinoff with Muta Man. <clears throat> I don't know if they're saying there is one or there, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or we should do one or No, there, there was a there was a uh yeah, there's there's a plan to See, uh, that that's a, that's another uh that's another behind this sort of behind the scenes thing. The uh the Halal oh. Hogan came about by accident. <laughs> we had Sam Shamoon playing the uh the the Imam, the Sheikh, the Mad Sheikh in the series and then um we're we're just dr- we're just driving around. We'd we'd finished. I think we'd finish. I think we'd either finish recording or we'd finish. We'd finish most recording, and we're 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 driving. Up. We had just dropped John off at the airport, and then it's me, vocab, and Sam. And vocab keeps asking Sam, "Can you do any impressions of? Uh, can you can you do impressions?" And Sam's like, "Well, I can kind of sound like Bruce Lee, and it wasn't that great. And I can kind of <laughs> do this and kind of do that." And then he, you know, none of it was very great. And all of a sudden he goes. Oh yeah, I can kind of do Hulk Hogan. Let me tell you something, brother. But he was like dead. If if you if you weren't looking at Sam, if he if you weren't looking at Sam, you would think, you would think that this was Hulk Hogan talking. It was like perfect. And he's going in and eat your vitamins, say your prayers, and blah blah blah. So he's spitting. It. And what was what was amazing? What was amazing was vocab earlier in the series. We'd all recorded it. Had already mentioned. Just improv, Halal Hogan, right? When when we came in there and we after we beat up the big pimp, and you know we came in there and, I, and uh, he goes, "You were like Halal Hogan." It's just a name he it's just a name he made up, and that, but then it turns out Sam could do Hulk Hogan, completely unknown to us. Oh, and Sam, that's dope. And then so no. we, we we made the character, and it, we had already we'd already introduced him, and so it was, uh, yeah, that was just that was Providence, just nothing. man. That's what it was. No, remember um, we brought in, so we were like uh, it was before. So when we first got out to start filming, we didn't even write. Um, Sam into the script, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, we're like, well, yeah, he can play in a mom. And then when he came, he was just like one take, and he was just like excellent. He was like perfect. We're like, what the heck? Sam can act? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> look, Sam, Sam was like, we we had tried a bunch of other people. I was trying to get Al-Fadi. I was trying to get all kinds of people to be the the imam. Couldn't find anyone who wanted to be an Islamicized me and play that kind of role. So Sam was I like, would have been good. He would have been a good one too, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, no, got, he's got like that gangster kind of look. Like you know, he he could have been like the cool, calm villain. Yeah, he could have so, pulled that off. Yeah, but and, and but but when Sam came down, we had, we had no idea, right? I mean, we see Sam doing, you know, you know, you know, uh, talking about Islam and doing apologetics and stuff. But we sit down in front of him and we just tell him, okay, do a do a sermon on science and the Quran. And his eyes got all he his eyes got all big, and it was just improv. And we made it like we might have made it like ninety seconds, and then we all we all just we were busting out laughing, and he had to finally stop, and then he had to kind of you know tell us guys I can't do this if you all are cracking up laughing the entire time. But but as as, as funny as it looks in the videos, it's completely different when you're sitting when you're sitting in front of Sam and he's looking down at you with these bug eyes on on his head and he's going the hikma the hikma right, and so it was just insane. And then we're like whoa, and yep, and then it turned into a halal hogan. So anyway, the, uh, someone uh, if they're talking about. Uh, we're going to do a spinoff with Hulk Hogan because he's a he's a a, a a Sunni sheikh, a sort of Salafi uh-huh. Salafi sheikh. But we're going to have another character who would be uh, the Muta man, the Muta man, Randy Shia, uh, Ra- maybe Ramzi Shia or something like that. But he's going to be like like <laughs> the uh, the macho man. But he's going to be the Muta man, so he's going to be a Shia and he's going to be his rival. And then we're going to have them. Uh, you, by the way, Sam actually trained as a as a as a professional wrestler. I don't mean. Yeah, 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 I don't mean yeah, real yeah, wrestler. Yeah. I mean he actually went to, went to school to be, you know, like like a guy in the ring and stuff like that. So he can actually do some of that wait, stuff. Wait, so. like like real wrestling or WWE? WWE oh, type. Yeah, he, WWE he, he went he went to training. Sam can do that stuff. What? Yeah, he went and did <laughs> that stuff when yeah, he was young. Yeah, they got like legit schools for that stuff, man. Yeah. What? That's crazy. See, I, was, I didn't know you had to go to school. I, thought, for that. I, I was thinking like the Great Muda. I don't know if y'all were, like wrestling fans back in the day. Remember the Great Muda? Nah, never uh-huh. heard of it, bro. You remember the Great Muda? The dude he was like he would. He would have the smoke where he was like the you blow the smoke in people's eyes and stuff. He used to fight Sting all the time. Oh, you're talking about WCW, man. I, we were, I was watching WWF, man. Oh, come on. I don't watch that WCW crap. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, MJ said he's got 43.7. Uh, you know. Upload or download? Uh, Should be two numbers. We need both numbers, MJ. Hey, hey, check this out. Benjamin Handelman said, time for John and his family to move into David Wood's house. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep, that's a, that's the consequences. John, John, if things get bad, we do have an extra room here. Uh, For all six of us, we'll, I'm we'll, just kidding. There's only four of us. We'll figure it out and make it work. We'll, <laughs> we'll we will figure something out. It's like the Brady Bunch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's funny. Um, hey, hey, somebody hey, said they had a question for John that they that that uh, super I just chatted. That. I don't see it, but I mean maybe one of us can scroll it. back and get it. But Hold on, so, so, it. someone just said, "Is Sam Shamoon live right now?" Because that would be I will go and troll his channel and tell everyone to come watch me. <laughs> this might have been a couple minutes ago. Is he still live? Oh no, he's not live anymore. Oh, that would have been so funny. Nothing, <laughs> nothing is more fun than going over to Sam's channel. And uh, yeah, Sam's going to be on my channel tomorrow. By the way, well, you have our sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you, should, you should make him do the the uh, halal holy uh, impersonation like the whole time. He's got to do the whole interview. <laughs> the whole thing. In the, in the Let me tell course. you something about the Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something about the Trinity, brother. <laughs> Yo, you guys, send us in your questions, too, because um, I'm trying to look now for some questions. I didn't really see very many. Well, I came across one. Uh, I'm not sure if it's out of order or not, but if you, I can just throw it up there if y'all want. Hey, hey, I just realized, yeah. uh, I just realized uh, with the three of us here, we could call ourselves Oreo Apologetics. <laughs> are you in the middle? Huh? You are in the middle. <laughs> you, you, no, you switched it to, to be... <laughs> Oreo, Oreo Apologetics. <laughs> That'll go over real well. With the extra double stuff and <laughs> oh snap, shots fired. Uh, I, I see a super chat here. I don't know if I'm out of order or not, but if y'all want, I can just go ahead and read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read go it. ahead. All right, it says uh, this is from Harley Wikes. I guess mm -hmm. it is. You know, I'm, I'm thanking you for uh, the super chat on David's channel. You know what I'm saying, um, you know, what do you think of Planninga's reformed epistemology? What would and, and I guess the follow up is what would you say if a different religion had a similar epistemology? Yeah, I like this one, huh? Alan? Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, Everybody already knows. Oh, yeah, man. my apologies, if, friends. No, if I'm John, if me and John are start a fight, man. If you know? John, uh, it's going to be two on one because you and me are on the same side of this, and John McRae okay. is the uh, yeah. is about to get schooled here. We we don't. It seems like I'm the only one with common okay. sense when it comes to this. Look, we're to we're going to have to we're going to we. You know, we can't spend two hours on this, so we're going to have to just like limit it to some brief comments, basically giving uh, our views. Let me just give you a quick, uh, quick uh, what I think about Alvin Plantinga, why I like Plantinga, uh, especially in especially in that in, the, in that main article where he, where he presented that. Um, but uh, it's a classic paper. It's in it's in pretty much all the uh, like if you get a, a philosophy of religion anthology and something like that, that that's uh, that's always in there. Um, but uh, yeah, how he does it. When he argues, Planigo will respond to someone's paper. So someone will make an argument and Planigo will basically give an overview of what the guy says. And then he will say, well, I wonder what he means here. Well, he can't mean this because if he meant that, I could simply refute him by saying this. So we'll assume that he's mean, he means this other thing. And then he'll start going along, going along that way. Now, if he means this, then this raises this problem and I can refute that. So maybe we could fix his argument by doing this. And what happens is he keeps doing this over and over again until you get to an argument that was much stronger than what the other, what the other guy even, because, you know, now it's Planiga's brain arguing this guy's case for him. And he ends up modifying the guy's position until it becomes a much stronger version of that guy's position. And then he'll destroy it, right? Then he'll then he'll destroy uh, then he'll destroy that guy's case. Um, with that said, I'm not completely not completely set on Planiga's position. Uh, keep in mind that he doesn't um, he doesn't say that, that that there can't be a defeater for this kind of belief, right? So you know, if you have some sort of uh, direct access to God, some sort of um, some some sort of uh, uh, some sort of sensus divinitatis, right? If you have some sort of direct sense of God, he's not saying that can't be defeated, right? He's not saying you can't have evidence that somehow proves that 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 that's wrong, but he's saying that you can, you know, believe in God uh, based on that without what he what he calls you know propositional evidence, right? In other words, uh, ar evidence based on arguments and so on. So I happen to believe that he's right about that. I'm assuming. I've never talked to Adam about this, but I'm assuming just based on that little prequel right there that Adam agrees with him too. So we'll go ahead and let John, John give his view next, and then we'll let Adam speak uh, finally. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's smooth, huh? No, so um, just to put it in practical, simple language, I'm not going to use the philosophical language um, precisely here. Um, but uh, what I want to say is that, like, uh, I, okay, I'll give you a practical example. I have an identical twin brother who's not a believer, okay? Um, and he he was an atheist. Now he's um, 
uh, he, I guess, kind of like agnostic type or more of a theist at this point, but has kind of a weird view. But anyways, what changed was that he said that he had a spiritual experience where he it sounded kind of like a near-death experience where he left his body. And then he um, basically um, found like God and God didn't really care about what we do. And he said, there's no rules or anything like that. It's all us just making up stuff, that sort of thing, right? So he had an experience um, and then, so if I took the reformed epistemology view, I'm supposed to say, well, I know Christianity is true. I mean, this is my, my kind of lay way of saying it. I know Christianity is true because I had an experience with the Holy Spirit that nobody else can verify, right? Um, all the evidence is just purely internal. And then, so with somebody like my brother, then I'd have to say, well, my experience is true, but your experience is not true. Um, and even though we can't verify anything about either one of our experiences. So those are the kind of problems that I think you run into on just a practical kind of reformed epistemology type view, especially with the defeater defeater um, edition too, where you say that like, well, somebody else had, you know, you say, well, I know I didn't commit this crime, even though they all the evidence stacks up against me. You know, if that's the case, I think like, and, and so they apply that same logic to um, believing in God based off of that. You have an experience of God. And so, you know, only because of that, you apply that kind of logic straight to, you, in other words, in my view, you'd have to be cheating if you're going to say that that's true for me, but not true for other people. You know, then it's kind of like the problem that we're already compounded with in culture. So that's kind of like a brief rundown of it. Of course, I didn't hit on all the other points, but that's kind of like my basic kind of um, problem with it. So when it comes to epistemology, I'm more of a um, <clears throat> Uh, just a classical foundationalist or something along those lines. I, I really like Tim, uh, Tim and Lydia McGrew's position on epistemology. That seems to suit well with my intuitions. So, All right. Now for something that's not horrible. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to refrain from re responding to John. I'm, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to embarrass yourself, back you don't embarrass like, yourself in front in of, what, Carolina. 600 people right now? <laughs> I know, man, we're, we're, man, in South Carolina, we were going back and forth for like an hour and some change, man. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to recreate that. But, you know, I, I am super sympathetic to uh, planning his view. And now, I will say up front that it seems to me that of the, the broad branches of, of, of philosophy, epistemology seems to be where you find the most gridlock. I mean, you have really smart people who hold vastly different positions and can, you know, argue for them. So that gives me pause. I mean, so I'm willing to say that, you know, I, I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? I mean, pl planning is not the only smart epistemologist out there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like, like uh, John mentioned, you know, uh, the McGrews are super smart. And so I, I, I would want to hear, you know, maybe they're, I think they take more of an internalist, you know, yeah. uh, overall. So it'd be kind of interesting to hear their approach. But according to Tyler McNabb, I mean, it seems there, there can be variations of the um, reformed epistemologist framework that uh, can it, it can accord with uh, internalist position. So, it'd be, you know, that's kind of an interesting discussion. Anyway, um, I, I think about, um, you know, for example, I, I read a lot of slave narratives, you know, given you know, the context that I typically, you know, minister in. Um, I, I like coming from primary sources when I talk to folks about what the experience of the African enslaved person was like. And one thing that you find uh, time and time again is you find statements where African enslaved persons are talking about how they, they went to you know, the slave, master ho slave master's house and, and heard you know, something that was obviously false. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, in their own you know, experience, you know, the, you know, God made himself very clear to them. Like, There's like one, I want to, I think it's, um, uh, I think it's actually it's John Brown. He says that, you know, this, the, um, Slaves were not allowed to get. Oh, actually, they, they, you know, the folks feared for slaves to get any religion and education. But I reckon that God just, you know, told us about Himself in the hereafter. And it's just, it's just a really powerful statement about God being able to reach into the human experience and make Himself, you know, known. And so I think that's a real yeah. thing for people. And, I, and I, I think that, you know, to John, to John's point, um, the nature of our subjective experience is that. You know, th there are going to be aspects of our subjective experience that, are, that aren't verifiable, ex externally speaking. You know, that's, that's just the nature of what it means to experience something subjective you know, or, or our subjective experience. So I, it doesn't necessarily bother me that somebody could say, hey, I had this experience and you know, I, I assign some, you know, I, I, I take it to be veridical. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, to David's point, too, though. Yeah, I was uh, going to say real quick, I, I want to 
agree with that too. I should clarify that. I don't mean that God can't work through these movies. That's not what I'm trying to say. Or God yeah, you're, ju give you're just experience. saying you're just saying it's pointless because you can't believe it because you know, it, it can't be verified. It, can it has to be verified by someone else. No, that makes sense. What I want to say is no, that no, no, when no. You're you're sa you're saying that if I look around and I see this world around me, and someone comes along and he's colorblind or blind, he says, "I don't see any of this." I have to go, oh, "Okay, well, I guess the outside. I guess the world's not real because you don't see it, or because you see something else." Thanks, <laughs> John. Man, you're you're smashing it, man. You're, you're, you're smashing it, dude. Go ahead. Dude. So, no, no. What I was going to say is actually, Wood, you should actually, um, instead of giving evidence, you know, against Islam and stuff like that, you know, what if they're just having their personal experience? How are you going to reason with that? So in other words, you should just stop giving evidence, stop giving evidence and arguments because the thing that overrides it is the defeater defeater. And then therefore they're just as valid as anybody else for rejecting all of your views. But, you know, but see, this goes back to what David was saying is that, you know, planning takes the, his position, you know, that, that, the belief that God exists, or you know what he calls the cardinal truths of Christianity, like these beliefs are, are defeasible. You know what I'm saying yeah. it's not to say that it's like this infallible, yeah, you know, telling <clears throat> mechanism in the mind. Like he doesn't take it to be that. You know these things are defeasible. And so let's say if you do have you know uh, somebody who says I got that burning in the bosom if I'm like the Mormon <clears throat> or, or the Jehovah's and whatever it is, then you know that's a point where we can have a discussion and say okay, well here's you know kind of where I'm at with it. You know you give me your evidence, I'll give you mine. And then at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it's, you know, I can't, you know, physically compel somebody to believe what I, you know, uh, you know, the gospel. But, it, but I think that the feasibility clause, if you will, I think that that really, you know, counts for a lot. You know, I, I think that's better, too. Yeah. I, and I like it more than William Lane Craig's um, The Holy Spirit Epistemology. I think it's better than that, too, because he has the de facto and the de jure distinctions after all that. after all craig has done for you you throw him under the bus man what is, <laughs> what is this what is this no I, actually I mean, it's, it's okay. point though i mean like and i i think this is where you know i mean because the philosophy stuff is, is is obviously important but i mean taking it back to the scriptures it, yeah. it does seem pretty clear though that, that the holy spirit is is interacting with people Completely disagree. <laughs> mm -hmm. well the only scripture you can quote to is that romans 8 28 passage right Oh no! I can point to a whole bunch of. I mean, like, ah, I like, can't ah. go to any in the scripture without pick a page, let's talk about pick that. a book, uh, pick a book, I mean, McCray. Yeah, this gets into a broader issue, though. This gets <laughs> yeah. into a broader issue in terms of the nature of of revelation. You know, what I'm saying, like, you know, can God now? And and you know, there's going to be different camps on this. I understand, but I, I I think when you look throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, you see God interacting with people all the time. Yeah, I, I it's, there's nothing. It's not foreign yeah. to the scriptures. And so I think with, with today, John, John says, no, it's all meaningless. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying. I think in scripture, uh, you look at uh, Jesus, is, Jesus is doing all these public miracles and stuff like this to, to vindicate. Right. Um, you don't have these times where he's like, you know, why don't you just trust the internal, uh, you know, experience of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit to know that I'm God. You know what I mean? And stuff like that. That's not really what you get from the scripture well, I mean, by and large for the vast majority. For the vast majority, you get like, public events. Him, like, I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. But he did say to Peter, like when he said, you know, who do men say that I am? And then Peter says, You're yeah. Messiah. He says, you know, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but you know, my father who's in heaven. And then what was so it first? seems like there's some sort of revelatory thing going yeah. on here between the father and Peter. So so whereas you, so you could say that there's, you know, this kind of uh I don't know if you would call it experience. I don't know what you would want to call it, you know. But and then too, I mean the spirit our spirit cries out, Abba Father. Yo, right? yeah, you no. have this affirmation. Yo, yo, John, you know? John, yo. What, what what would you think about this? Because I I, th I think of it along the same lines as like a kind of uh, as uh, along the same lines as a kind of a moral sense, right? As a kind of moral intuition that you know if you if you believe that there are certain things that are really right and really wrong. And then, then you you could take that as you can take that as yeah. if, if you believe that your faculties are, are functioning properly, then you could take that as you have some as you have some sort of access to certain moral truths. And you may not be able to describe it or explain it or even defend it, but you could think of it that way. But that could be defeated. Right. If someone comes along and convinces you that, um, you know, you, you formed in a completely different way and that your cognitive faculties can't be trusted and that was wired into you by a process that just helped people who are wired like that to survive, then then you could start thinking, well, OK, well, yeah, maybe that doesn't fit with it, with that view. And maybe I can't trust maybe I can't trust uh, my moral reasoning faculties. Maybe they are flawed. And so, yeah, maybe that maybe that, yeah. you know, maybe 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 they don't work like that. So I'm, th I'm thinking I'm thinking uh, along those lines of if you have some sort of um, experience of of God, um, if you have some sort of experience of God, if you're if there is some sort of faculty for that, 
that some or all human beings have, and in some it works well, and in others it's defective. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is something like that, then you know you take that as some you take that as as some sort of basis. But you know if you found out that you just can't trust your faculties like that, or that things need to be verified, or that you you can trust it, I mean. You have a basis for that in Scripture. The Apostle Paul got revelations about the gospel. The first the first chance he had, he went to the apostles and said, "Hey, uh, I want to I want to run this gospel by you. I got this by revelation, but I'd like to run this by yeah. you to make sure it actually lines up with what yeah. Jesus taught." And so you can actually go out and, and test and, and actually uh, and actually make sure any sort of you know personal experiences or revelations actually line up with at, at, that act can, that can actually be tested. That you actually can test them. Yeah, yeah. No, so with, with the, the external faculties, that's more of like an externalist uh, view of epistemology and I'm more of an internalist. So I think that's where the difference would be. But I would say when it comes to like these moral intuitions and stuff like that, with intuitions, um, I notice that people have a vast array of intuitions. And so I'd say that intuition is a good starting point. doesn't mean it's true. You don't just accept that it's true just because you have the intuition. So it's similar to what you're saying, I think. I say that it's a good starting point, and then you can use reasoning and other tools and stuff like that to see if you can um, confirm that it's actually more veridical or it's something that's more to it. So that's that's the way I would look at it, basically. Hey, hey, sh shout out to, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> shout out to Cameron Bertuzzi. Capturing Christianity, who's uh, who's, yeah, in the, up, who's in the super chat, but uh, uh, there's another guy who just just went full time. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I can I, I can I can happily say that I did not advise him. So if he if he if <laughs> yeah, he, Cameron did it right. If his min, <laughs> if his ministry implodes, that's that's on him. Um, but uh, yeah, that's he says. By the way, reformed epistemology is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which, how do you know that? Oh, through uh, some sort of internal uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's a strong way, because he has to say, because no, the like, planning is, okay, I'm just making no, sure. No, I'm just messing right? with you, no. I'm but I, sure, I, right? I will say that, just to close it out, I'd say that I'm more uh, warm towards Planica's um, view than Craig's view, but um, I'd say that it's it's the whole... Um, the whole process, I'd say that at that point, you're just like, well, how do you know? You know, and I just don't read that biblically that you have the Romans 8, 28 passages that everybody goes to and you don't see these um, consistent private experiences. Doesn't mean God's not doing it. I'm not saying that at all. You know what I mean? But I'm saying that when it comes to I'm trying to adjudicate something more is like um, this is evidence or this is how I know something's true. Rather, that's a better way to put it. This is how I know something's true. I'd say I would treat it like the intuition type thing. I had this experience. I can't verify it precisely so then you can look into the evidence for christianity and stuff like that if it's consistent with that more then you know then you have something that's a little bit more that you can add on to it so yeah i just i really struggle with that because i think that you know scripture is pretty adamant you know that, that we can have this confidence you know um that we belong to to god you know what i'm saying and, by, oh by yeah this, the holy spirit but how, I mean, I, it's because of what jesus did why we have the confidence that's why always well, no, but wait a minute. Always but, to him, but you, but if somebody if, if if somebody were to ask you know paul the question like how do i know that i'm saved you know what i'm saying then he could reflect back on what he wrote but like, didn't i just tell you that you, no, I mean, he's not going to say whole, that. What is he saying? Galatians and Ephesians and Romans, all of these, he's pointing to what Christ did on the cross every time. That's how he's saying he knows. He says, we know this, even the sonship verses, like in Romans, you know, and the one in Galatians and all. He says, we can know this because of what Christ did, basically. And so that's yeah, why we know we've been adopted to so his family. There's, so there's no disjunct between acknowledging the work of the cross, you know what I'm saying, and acknowledging the work of the Spirit. You know what I'm saying? They, they're, they're all involved. You know what I'm saying? You know, in, in our in yeah. our salvation. Same I, agree. I just Justice don't see him appealing to his appealing So to when you think about no. what was that? I don't see him appealing to an internal experience of this the spirit in order to know that I mean, Christianity or to know what that he's saved and we're not in our sins. That that's the only difference I'd say. Well, I mean I, we can we can read it though, you know. Um I mean I know we didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it though, but you know, I mean, just tell me what, what book you're thinking from. Thinking from uh, Romans, Galatians, Ephesians. Um, while, while he's yeah, so, while he's looking that up, John, uh, not a verse yep. here. You can answer this real quick while he's getting his passages together. Uh, yep, not, yep. not a verse has asked a few times. Uh, could John McRae tell us a little about his upcoming stream with Shameless Sam Shimon, the Assyrian <clears throat> the Assyrian loser, the shame of all Assyrians uh, <clears throat> tomorrow? So uh, first, go ahead and tell us uh, what time and what you guys be talking about. Yep. Yeah. So the stream will be tomorrow night, about the time this stream started, I believe. It's oh, uh, oh. Well, I, 
then I should not probably go live tomorrow night. I'll just tell everyone to go over there. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, no, no. I said, Definitely yeah. Then now, now Adam's, <laughs> me, me and Adam are going to go live. So, guys, yeah, you can go over to John's channel for this super boring and possibly heretical. No, no, definitely heretical presentation by shameless, shameless Sam Shamoon, the wolf in sheep's clothing. Really, really not very bright wolf in sheep's clothing. That's why he's called shameless Shamoon. You can either watch that or you can watch a way better one, a rival one over, over here. And, uh, See, my, what you're trying to do now is uh, save yourself from having nobody show up to your stream, right? So you're like, hey, guys, just go over to his stream <laughs> so you have an excuse. No, I'm saying don't go over there. Don't go over to that horrible, <laughs> horrible, horrible stream. Um, so, yeah, tomorrow we're, we'll be talking about the Trinity. And basically, um, Marcus Rogers is a popular YouTuber um, who's a oneness Pentecostal, so he doesn't believe in the Trinity. And um, people say that he's changed his position, by the way, and he hasn't. Um, he, this video that we're going to be responding to just came out two months ago. Um, people read the title to one of his videos, but he didn't say he changed his view on it. Um, but anyways, um, maybe he, he changed some small nuance here. When I, how I remember the video is basically he changed the fact that he doesn't think that Trinitarians are unsaved or something like that. Now he thinks that um, they're both saved. But anyways, um, he has a video recently where he says these are questions that he's given to Trinitarians, the people who believe in the Trinity. And so we're going to just be going through those those questions. So we're not going to be like uh, dogging on, on Marcus or nothing like that, really. That's not really the goal of the stream that I wanted. I just kind of wanted to answer these questions because they're good, practical questions that help you understand the Trinity and clears up a lot of the misconceptions because he uses these kind of same arguments a lot to argue against uh, the Trinity. And I think that these um, these kind of objections there aren't, aren't that great. So um, we'll go through it and I think that it will really help other people understand the Trinity a little bit better. So that's the plan for the live stream tomorrow night. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I, got, I, I was supposed to put my kids to bed like 15 minutes ago. I'll be right back. Oh, run and do that real quick. We'll run through some questions right, right back. Yep, go ahead. <clears throat> um, Rabbit Wolf says, please give the correct definition of the word contradiction. People like Jimmy Khan use this. I don't know who Jimmy Khan is, but use this word incorrectly constantly. Um, yeah, a, a contradiction is uh, you have to be careful, right? If you're talking about something we, you know, in regular discourse, we tend to use it a little more usely, uh, loosely than. Um, let me see if I can get rid of this uh, screen for a second. Um um how would i get rid of him uh i'm nervous what's this gonna do huh. nope dang it <laughs> all right let me start let me start over here all right we're gonna go uh oh there we go ah no dang it <laughs> all right ah! <laughs> okay hang on one second one second one more try, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Now we're just going to go John. Now, bam. Look at that. All right. Learn how to use the controls here. Okay. So you're old. You got to stop trying to mess with technology being that old. Yeah, yeah. Keep oh, so, 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 so a contradiction is basically claiming that something is true and false at the same time in the same sense. All right. Something is true and false at the same time in the same sense. And so if someone's doing that, then they got a problem. And basically the law of contradiction is sort of the admission, the price of admission into the world of rational thinking, uh, philosophy, rational thought. And so, uh, yeah, and, and no, notice what's, what's interesting is if someone's willing to grant a contradiction at, at the foundation of their, of their reasoning, there's nothing you can do to refute it aside from pointing out the contradiction, right? In other words, if they say, I don't care, I've got a contradiction, there's nothing you can then do to, to prove them wrong. So uh, take Matt Dillahunty, right? <laughs> I pointed out that in his opening statement, he was claiming that uh, that there's there's no obligation, there's no obligation to um, no moral obligation or anything like that. The universe doesn't compel you to <clears throat> accept that we should seek the good. Uh, human beings just do it. Uh, but that once you agree that we have this goal of seeking the good, then you know you can figure out different ways of of, of seeking the good. So I pointed out the obvious, namely that if you're a kind of person or a psychopath or something like that who doesn't believe that he's seeking the good, then according to that view, you've done nothing wrong because you didn't have any moral obligations. You had no obligation to seek the good. But once you decided, oh, let me get Adam back on here. All right. And hopefully there'll be no problems here. And boom, look at that. Oh, snap. Perfect. Um, 
So I pointed out that if you if you accept that moral system, then that means that people who don't accept the idea that we are seeking the good have done nothing wrong if they go on mass killing sprees because they haven't uh, they haven't uh, they haven't signed on to morality and so they've done nothing wrong. They had no moral obligations. But then he spent, you know, the rest of the debate trying to argue that we do have some sort of we, we have to do it anyway. We have to seek the good. And even if we don't seek the good, we still have to seek the good. And the universe somehow, uh, you know, puts this burden on us and other human beings impose it. He's trying to he's, he's basically arguing that we, we we have some sort of obligation and we don't have an obligation. So that's a contradiction at the, at the foundation of his reasoning. Now, now, why that why that actually can help you is if you're willing to accept that. <clears throat> If you're willing to accept a contradiction, then it makes it impossible to refute apart from pointing out the contradiction. So if I tell you I'm a married bachelor, the definition of a bachelor is an un unmarried man. So if I tell you I'm a married bachelor, that's a contradiction. But notice, if I'm if I'm happy with the contradiction, I don't have a problem with the contradiction. There's nothing you can do to refute me. You can't say, David, you're not a bachelor, you're married. I would say, what, what are you talking about? I said, I'm a married bachelor, you moron. I said, I'm a married bachelor. Of course I'm married. And they say, no, 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 no. That means you're not a bachelor. I said, no, I'm a married bachelor. Or if I weren't married and you say, David, you're not, you're not, you're not married. You're a bachelor. And I said, oh, I know I'm a married bachelor. Wh which part of this aren't you getting? And so you could just, you know, whichever part of the, whichever, whichever part of that the person is trying to use to refute you, uh, he then ends up, you just appeal to the other part, the, the, the other part there. And so, yep, uh, contradiction. Something is true and false at the same time in the same sense. All right. Adam, did you turn your fan on? Uh, no. <laughs> You're just going to have to sweat it out, bro. Sweat it yeah. out, son. Live stream sometimes, it'll get hot, and I'm like, yeah, I just got to sweat it out. Sweat way. it out. <laughs> Probably needs to anyway, man. Yeah. Trying to lose his weight. Yeah, you got to, you got to, that's what I'm doing. I'm in a sauna right now. Yeah, how am I coping I'm, with your uh, staying at home all the time, by the way? What do you mean we're yeah, killing? That's about, about, about what I've been doing. <laughs> the the, the clothing. I, I mean, you know, actually, it was cool is that um, this year, uh, my wife and I, we started homeschooling. So, oh. I mean, it really wasn't like, you know, a thing, you know, in terms of like the kids going somewhere and then, you know, now being home, like we were already kind of in that mode. It does suck because we were, um, we did have them in a co-op. Um, so that, that had to shut down eventually. So that, that kind of sucked. But I mean, we, we kind of just been doing what we've been doing really, you know, if anything was kind of weird is like my job is kind of, you know, wigged out right now. Um, trying to figure out, I'll probably be working from home here pretty soon. So, oh, um, you're not working from home yet. Nah, man. Nah. Ooh. And it's crazy. I, I work at a hospital too. You know what I mean? So uh, I uh, I've been in and out, you know, um, like with my job, I work with uh, homeless veterans. And so having to check on them and that kind of stuff and, you know, trying to make sure they're, they're squared away. That, Unfortunately, that's why that's why you wanted to title. The, he he legit wanted to title the live stream. We all going to die. <laughs> he said that. No, no, you got to say it right. We're all going to die. That's with a bunch of eyes. No, I mean, I mean, I've been out in it, man. I mean, you know, fortunately, you know, God, you know, God is faithful. I've, I've been good so far. But, uh, you know, a lot of our guys. I mean, with, with the homeless population, is obviously vulnerable. So that, that's a that's a real thing, man. But I'll, I'll probably be coming home and working from home pretty. I'll, I'll say within the next week or so, more more than likely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, I'm praying for you, man. Hope you uh, you stay healthy out there too, man. That stuff. Uh, I know it's in Virginia. It's growing a lot out there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is. I mean, DC is one of the hot spots. You know, you got certain parts of Virginia. As a matter of fact, um, well, actually, I probably shouldn't say that, but mm -hmm. it's. Very close to it's it's hitting very close to home. It's hitting very close to home. And the thing is, I've got a newborn. You know, what I mean, I've I've got yeah. a, a five month old here at the crib, and so I'm very careful. You know, when I, when I come home, to, I spray my shoes before I walk in with some bleach and stuff like that. And you know, just just being just being you know extra cautious, man. Yeah. Good, man. Hey, uh, uh, Tatiana J. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, you were you were uh, you and uh, um, you and uh, Daniel Apologetics were requesting. Uh, Braxton Hunter to be on, but yep, that'll be Monday. So I'm going to have Braxton Hunter on Monday discussing the Kalam cosmological argument. So, oh. hey, Braxton's that dude, man. Yeah, Braxton's my boy. Cool dude, man. Cool. cool. Uh, um, let me just let me give a couple shout outs here for the uh, for the super chat. So uh, MJ Jackson was the one who set it off. We already checked that one out. Um, Susie Lassarge said blessings. Thanks, Susie. Uh, Lisa, look. Um, I don't know what that is. That's a super sticker. 
It's too small on my screen. It's got something holding up a, a number one flag, but I can't tell what it is on the on the screen. Uh, believing thinkers says for John and uh, says for John and Adam. All right, well, <laughs> two fifty each, Adam. Yeah, <laughs> two fifty. Hey, hey. Now he was saying that when we were talking back then about hey, hey, um, hey two, two, two fifty is two fifty, guys. But uh, <laughs> two hundred and fifty or like you gotta take out YouTube's cut. Two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, I saying two hundred and fifty. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, keep it. Keep, keep keep in mind we do have a trickle down system where people support me and I, I help support these guys and these guys you know yeah. sign up for other people. So yeah, it all it all works. Yeah, I don't know about the trickle down stuff, man. I, I think I favor socialism right now. <laughs> I, I think we need to <laughs> <laughs> give the underdog some money here, buddy. Uh, Sh Cheryl R looks like a is that a, a fox eating an apple or eating someone's heart? I can't tell. <laughs> There's Cheryl R on there. I can't. I'm having. I'm having a problem with this little screen I'm looking on right now. But it looks. It's a, either a fox oh, eating an apple or eating someone's heart. And so that's, kind of that's either okay. ador that's either adorable or disturbing. Uh, <laughs> and then we have uh, Rox B saying, shouting out, uh, "Hey Rox D New." Uh, Ada Wong says, "David Wood University shirts." Lol. So I guess that was in in, in conjunction with the uh, with the uh, jihadi tears mugs. Uh, Petar said, "Can you do Muhammad meets Jesus? That's too easy." Yeah, for a while we've been planning on we've been planning. We never actually have gotten down to doing it, but it's not going to be Muhammad meets Jesus in the boom boom room. We've been planning for a while. We we've been planning a lot of stuff that we haven't gotten to because a lot of the stuff takes a lot of a lot of preparation and so on. But we've been planning for a while a Jesus versus Muhammad epic rap battle of history. Where, spoiler alert, by the end of the song, Muhammad's going to be bowing down, calling Jesus Lord. But uh, that's all the that's all the. Uh, that's all the spoilers there. Then we had uh, Confidence in Christ Ministries. That was an awesome. Uh, that was an awesome vid with Dr. Brown. Keep up the great work. A lot more coming from uh, the guys I recorded: William Lane Craig, Mike Lacona, Gary Habermas, and uh, Michael Brown. Um, Pitsar Millick again. Maybe you could do parody versions of of songs from Aladdin about Islam, like Prince Ali. But it's not. But it's about Sharia law. Our friend like me. But it's Satan. Uh, regrettably, I've, I've I've never watched that, so I don't know what the songs are. Um, wait, but, you, uh, wait, you never watched what? Aladdin. Aladdin. How? I don't know. It's like, I mean, a, it's like an American classic, man. Are there uh, is there good stuff in there that I could uh, use? No, nah, probably not. No, I'm watching for your own entertainment. Um. All right, you guys got some comments? Oh, snap. Yeah, so, uh, to, the, to the folks, uh, I got they got me to four thousand, man. Good looking out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh you got the four thousand? Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey guys, really though, um, yeah. Subscribe to Adam's channel though, because Adam's got a lot of dope material that he's been working on, and Adam is one of the guys that I know is just going to get better and better, and his content like definitely needs to be seen. So uh, make sure you guys. Um, I hey, did I get a. Yeah, no doubt, man. Uh, Doc Funny, what's up, my man? Um, yeah, I should probably clarify this because a people, few people were saying that um, in the chat. They're like, John, congrats on the new baby. Um, I'm John. <laughs> so Adam yeah. is one that had the oh, new yeah, baby. Yeah. My little baby's two years old now. Or, yeah, he's going to be two in August. So, But um, anyways, um, Doc Funny says, uh, John, are you dad again? So that clears that up. And he said, and how's Miss Meme doing? You're looking good with that sweet audio gear. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, my man. Uh, my wife is doing good. Uh, we're doing better. We're still getting stuff sorted out on the, the medical stuff. It's just been a hassle with the medical insurance because she has a pre-existing condition now. So it's just been a hassle. But, um, but we're, we're working on it, man. Um, so we'll always get a read from you, Doc Funny. For, 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 for any media just said, uh, Muhammad versus Sam Shamoon in the Boom Boom Room, where Sam blocks Muhammad. Because <laughs> Sam's famous for just blocking anyone who so much as questions anything he says. He just block. He just block. And so and so instead of Muhammad blowing up Sam, Sam instead blocks Muhammad. That would be, he just uh, blocks that would be funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, was thinking, I, I, I stepped away, so now I'm lost in the chat. I'm not sure where we are. I got to catch up. I was I was thinking of getting just a clip of uh, Ben Shapiro where he has some sort of dark background, like where he's speaking somewhere or something like this, where he sits down, and just it's just Ben Shapiro with a, with a dark background, and so Muhammad starts off and he goes, and with me now is, and he looks over and then it, it cuts to Ben Shapiro and Muhammad goes, a Jew, and then he just and then he just blows him up and that's that's the end. Um, 
But I, I would pro- I would probably get Ben Shapiro's uh, permission before I before I did that. <laughs> Yo, you know, it'd be dope if you get Tyson Fury on your channel, man. Like actually in the flesh, you know, to do it, to get in the boom boom room, man. You got you got to make that happen, bro. <laughs> Tyson Fury in the boom boom room. Yeah, you got to make it happen, man. You got those connects, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the first thing I'd like to say, Mohammed, is that I'd like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, <laughs> the only Lord, the only God. <laughs> right. that, guy, that guy's awesome. <laughs> He's dope. He's pretty dope. He's pretty dope. Yeah. I saw he was. Uh, I don't know if he, this is a long time ago, but right after he beat, uh, right after he beat Klitschko, um, they had a press conference afterwards, and uh, you know, because Klitschko wanted a rematch and stuff like this, and Tyson Fury, and he was, he was, he was even a, uh, he even had a bigger belly than he did, you know, when he's fighting Deontay Wilder, but uh, Tyson Fury, you know, Klitschko's trying to talk a little bit of trash, and it's kind of not working because you know he's Russian; they're not good t- trash talkers. Uh, you know, the best they could come up with is like, I must break you. And I know before someone says, he's Ukrainian. I know. I call them all Russian. It's, you know, it's just, you know. Anyway, I call them all Ivan Drago. Wait, Drago too. wasn't Ukrainian? Huh? Wait, no. wait. Klitschko's Ukrainian. Oh, Klitschko's Ukrainian. Yeah, Klitschko's Ukrainian. Yeah, no, Dra- yeah. Drago, okay. Drago, was, Drago was Soviet Union. But, yeah, um, right. yeah, so, uh, so Klitschko's trying to, you know, to talk a little bit trash. And, and, and Tyson Fury just goes, yeah. I just beat you. Look, I'm not even an athlete. Look at me. <laughs> to call to call me an athlete would be an insult to all athletes who've ever existed. He goes, look, you want to see something? And he stands up. He pulls his shirt off. He's got his belly hanging out. And he's shaking his <laughs> belly. And he's going, look at me. Look at me. And he goes, and he sits back. He, he sits back and he goes, you got beat by a fat man. And then every time Klitschko would try to talk, Tyson Fury would just go, you got beat by a fat man. And I was like, it was, he was just he was just burning him up, man. He was just burning him up with you got beat by a fat man. You got beat by a fat man. So the, yeah, the dude, the dude is just goes like man in shape. That's like he's, he's kind of one. Of he's shredded. He's shredded. I mean, especially for being as old as he is. You know that that guy's that guy is nothing but rip, man. Right, right. Um. By the way, about this quarantine situation, I can't. St- so I have a problem because I'm super introverted. And I also hate the outdoors. So I have kind of a dual problem here. But I try to go on a walk every day because the gyms are all closed, which sucks. So um, I would advise that. To, to Wait, was, that a, was that a question? Was someone asking what we do, what we're doing for the? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm lost in the chat. I'm going to go to the end. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to keep up. But I'm, it's hard for me to, like, listen, think, and type at the same time because I'm just not gifted in that in that way. See, the key is what you do is just ignore whatever David's saying. That's what you yeah, do. Yeah, basically. Yep. Whatever he's saying, just, just ignore him. Uh, you got a super chat from Tatiana and Doc Funny. You want me to read them? Or are you pulling them up? Uh, no, go ahead. Uh, Tatiana J says, um, I may give away everything I have to help others, and I may even give my body as an offering to be burned, but I gain nothing by doing all this if I don't have love. Yeah, she's quoting. Oh, she's she's quoting yeah. From, yeah, she's quoting first right. Corinthians. Yeah, she's quoting uh, for any hey, of you. Man, I'm, for I'm any of you, lie. Like, I, I was really scared when, when when he started reading that. But then yeah, I, I know, I know. Like, <laughs> first Corinthians. Yeah, I thought. Like, oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I thought. Yeah, I thought she was like, what? In my body, what? What the heck's going on here? To be burned? What the heck is going on? Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was thrown off for a second too. But yeah, guys, uh, one of the one of the most epic. Uh, one of the most epic passages in uh, in the Bible is called the love chapter. It's in it's in First Corinthians thirteen. In fact, um, a couple deba- I think a, I think maybe two maybe two or three debates I had back in the day, where I was addressing the Muslim argument that the Quran is so masterfully written it must be it must be from God. And I think I tossed out the challenge and I said, okay, okay, uh, we'll just do it like this. You 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 you. Come up with the best passages you can from the Quran. I'll put them up against just one one little passage from the Apostle Paul. And I read that. And I say, show me anything better than that in the, in the Quran. Show me anything better than that. Yeah. Any combination of <laughs> verses that are better than that. Oh, man. I so, yeah. love that um, I love so many Paul's stories like Galatians, too. I love Galatians. I love Romans. I love, yeah, there's a b- bunch of books in the Bible that I actually really love, too. And you guys, have you guys ever looked into um, really a deep look into John? Even like First John um, or even or actually... Um, John, um, the uh, I am statements, the significance, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. the yeah, significance yeah. is crazy because you have the Greeks and then you have the Jews and then you have these um, views of what they had in all of the different um, I am statements, too. So, like, John is amazing. Like, so much of his stuff, like even First John, I used to hate First John. Now it's one of my favorite books. But like, it's actually um, my favorite book of the Bible, First John. 
Really? Oh, that's yeah, crazy. First John yeah. Paul, man. Like there's so much really um, insanely amazing writing in in these New Testament um, books too, by the way. And people just don't understand the depth, especially John, I think. Um, so I've been studying John lately and it's it's amazing. So. Well, yeah, I mean, to your point, too, I think so many times we read it uh, through, like, kind of westernized eyes, so to speak, you know what I mean? But when you can really understand kind of the Hebrewisms in the New Testament and, like, what they were trying to articulate, it just opens up a whole nother world, you know what I mean? Opens up a whole nother world. I know for myself, I come out of, like, the Word of Faith uh, movement, you know, you know, thank God he took me out of that, you know, by God's grace. But when I was coming up, like, so many passages you read, and, and inevitably it would always be, you know, related back to money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just amazing because, you know, when you start reading the scriptures in terms of what they really mean, you see it like a beauty that yeah. you just didn't even know was there, you know what I'm saying? And it's just, um, yeah, it's just really getting into the word. I don't care how much you love, love apologetics, man. I mean, like, you know, you got to get in that word. I'm saying yeah, that's, that's yeah. so primary. Um, Adam, let, let's talk uh, later on, um, too, about some of the stuff, too, the John and stuff. We'll talk after we get off this stream or something, maybe. Um, cool, cool. But, hey, uh, the super chat from Doc Funny. Dr. Funny says, uh, uh, Pat, good man. He says, um, I have to work tomorrow again. Or I have to work again tomorrow morning. He, um, he's a doctor, by the way. So, hey, thanks for your service, really. I mean, it's crazy. Mm, the yeah. doctor is having to work. It's crazy. Um, so I have to get out. Get to see you all. It was really... Uh, it is really grounding and building up in my faith to see you guys talking apologetics. Long days ahead, boys. God bless and keep you all. Sweet, sweet. Appreciate yeah, it, man. man. And Doc, cool. Dr. Cool. Funny, uh, uh, since uh, since Adam's definitely going to be uh, running into some coronavirus, um, you should join <laughs> him. You should join him for that that special live stream. We all going to die. <laughs> right. No. Linda insights to how we're all gonna die. Yeah, yeah. No, guys, for, guys, for real, it's uh, it's uh, you know, you want to watch out for the coronavirus because the the idea is you want it to spread slowly so that hospitals aren't overwhelmed. But in general, in general, in general, people are are usually okay from it. Like we were just talking to Sean. Hey, you know Sean's got coronavirus. Yep. Sean yeah, I've been talking yep. to him. my boy Sean. Believe Hurst. Me. Yeah, Sean Hurst. Really? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's been. Yeah, mix, mix, uh, guys. Uh, if you check out the channel, mixed martial apologetics, mixed martial apologetics, oh, man, mixed that, martial man. apologetics. We were just on. Someone share a link to mixed martial apologetics. He just started that. I mean, he's been doing uh, videos for a while. He's a, he's a, he's a. The guys, you know, he's a martial artist and so on. And so, uh, he's actually combining his interests. He's using, he's using martial arts to explain apologetics uh, ideas and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. interesting, uh, interesting channel. But he just started making videos uh, along those lines uh, over the past like month and a half. So so check out uh, check out that channel. But yeah, he was just talking. Super just smart guy to- too, man. Um, real smart guy. Mm-hmm. Actually, um, last week I did a presentation, um, you know, refuting you know some aspects of, of atheism, particularly as you see it emerging African American context. And there was a, a argument that I was trying to formulate, and he helped me out with that. You know, um, a particular mm-hmm. version of the argument from reason. So he's real big on epistemology. Real smart guy, man. Very helpful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's he agrees with me on epistemology. By the way, did you know that? Uh, I mean, we talked about epistemology. I mean, his well, his position actually is that you know uh, there's various defensible perspectives, and he's cool with, with folks as long as you're kind of yeah, because he's nicer you know, than me. About, you know, <laughs> he's a nice guy. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I do know that he he has some misgivings about uh, playing his position. You know, but. Um. There's a lot of questions on First John. Uh, people are asking like First John three nine and stuff. Um, I won't. I won't just you know take up all the time going into First John. But um, I'd say check out the fellowship perspective. I think it's the perspective that makes the most sense in First John, and that's what really transformed my my understanding about how to understand these these verses uh, when they say like the person who sins um, or, or he says if he who sins is of the devil, you know. And then you have passages like in First John one ten where it says if you say that you're without sin then the truth is not in you. Um, so check out like the fellowship perspective. Um, Charlie Bing wrote a fascinating article on it in um, a book called, um, I think it's called 20 something problems about, or tough questions about grace, something like that. Um, his article in there was really, um, I think kind of revolutionary to my understanding. And it really made First John beautiful because it's not about like people take the pur- purpose statement in First John 5 and say, this is how you know you're saved. This is like a test of, faith you know what i mean but instead um if you look at it from the fellowship perspective it actually makes a lot more sense i think um and and then it makes it about intimacy with god and then it becomes a lot more enlightening and beautiful so um that's just what i'd say to that so 
Um, <clears throat> Sola Scriptura said, uh, David, ever had any invitations from the mainstream media uh, about your channel? Um, <coughs> yeah, and, uh, back when the Dearborn stuff was going on, we uh, spoke to uh, various news channels and so on. Um, I, I, I think we were all on. I think we are all on when the, Deer, when the Dearborn uh, situation was going on. So, yep, ended up uh, on several shows there, and I was on, I've been on stuff with, with regards to, uh, I was interviewed about the Ground Zero Mosque and so on. Apart from that, I was, there were a bunch of times, because I lived in New York, where people would, I would just get a message all of a sudden after some terrorist attack or something like that, and would say, hey, can you be down here at this studio to talk about this? at uh you know by 3 p.m and stuff like that and i would see it at like 6 p.m <laughs> i'm the worst you're 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 not the worst Sounds politically <laughs> right right <laughs> you, know, you, you, you don't even know what anyone's talking about john that's before yeah, your time you were a baby down. it's trickled down yeah so, so that was, was like three years old man yeah, yeah. Not, i'm saying uh socialism yeah is, so, is so, so so Ray. <laughs> Reagan's view was, hey, with it right now. Reagan's <laughs> view, like Adam's team Bernie right now. Team Bernie. <laughs> uh, so trickle, burn. trickle down economics. Give the rich people, know, give the I rich know. people some money and it'll trickle down to us like poor the, people. I know. Right. <laughs> little trickle. Here's a little trickle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we could, uh, I guess we could uh, be wrapping it up here in about the next 10 minutes. All right, oh, people are asking if you have coronavirus, Wood, because you're coughing and stuff. No, I had a little cold, but no coronavirus. Um, yeah, I told him when I saw him yesterday with all the weight loss. I was like, oh, man, I thought the corona got him, man. Um, uh, J John Buckley said, did you guys ever get your camera back from the mayor? Yes, that was actually how we were able to prove that we were innocent in court. But they, the problem was... So for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, you just look up uh, Dearborn Arrests unedited footage or something like that. Dearborn Arrests. But um, yeah, we were at the Dearborn Arab Festival. Uh, Nabil was answering some questions of some, some young Muslims. I was standing there holding a camera, wasn't saying a word. And police showed up, threw us all in jail. Uh, not, not all of us, just the Christians. And then uh, the mayor and the chief of police, they all issued statements that we were screaming at people and causing a riot and all of these things. It was all total nonsense. And I was recording the entire time so I could prove that we weren't doing any of that. But they kept our cameras um, for for almost a month and wouldn't give us back. So by the time we actually got our cameras back, everyone had taken it for granted that we were screaming at people when we were a bunch of jerks. So even Christians were throwing us under the bus. And so, uh, yeah, there were a few exceptions. There were a few exceptions like, you know, James White. James White was one of the guys defending us back then. Uh, Lydia McGrew was one of the people defending us back then. So, uh, but yeah, there were lots of people. There were lots of people, lots of important people who were just, nope, these guys are bad. Uh, and so on. Didn't even pay attention. But yeah, we got the cameras back. In fact, uh, I just found one of those cameras. I'm thinking of giving it away because I have way better cameras now. If anyone wants it as like a uh, souvenir from history, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of giving it away to someone. <laughs> Uh, I should look on there. It's probably got some. You gonna some, do, some like one of those things? Like we got like like prayer water or something like that, where you give somebody the camera and they're healed of the coronavirus or something. Is that is that? What well, I mean, here? I mean, this thing's for seventy nine ninety nine. This 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 camera. This where is it? It should be around here somewhere. Actually, uh, this camera is crazy because uh, I mean, this in two thousand nine when security attacked us and started slapping us around and stuff like that. That was the camera we were using then. The next year. Uh, when we got uh, when we got arrested and they, they took the camera, that was that was the camera there. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't need it for anything anymore. Again, I have way they're way better. There's just way better cameras now. So someone if someone wants a, a cool sou you know autograph souvenir or something like this propped up. Hey, you know that was the camera that David Wood and Nabil got arrested with all those years ago, and that was the one where they got the crap beat out of them. <laughs> they're right there. <laughs> Be funny. Um, let's see. People say to auction it. You Somebody said, it. Adam, I sent David another super chat that you might appreciate. Uh, <laughs> which one was that? Ian Sassanazal said, I bid $1 million. Sold, sir. Uh, that is a verbal binding contract. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> Oh, whatever happened to the Islamicize me props? Did you guys send those out? No, we, saved, we, 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 we still saved all of them. Okay. Dope, dope. We need to do another. Uh, we need to do the next one, man. No, we're gonna do the prequel. It's a prequel. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. We got it. I want. I can't wait to start when all this stuff clears up. We'll get it done. We need to. Hey, do David, the, what's up? Yeah, somebody said Adam looks like a chilled out Lennox Lewis. That's like didn't somebody say that last night? Was yeah. Like, you do look yeah. like you do look like Lennox Lewis, man. 
Uh, and Jim Brown. I, I watched Jim, Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Yeah, I know that the um, <clears throat> back the f- old football player. I was watching yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, I, and he reminded me of you, which was weird. I was watching him last night. And my son went with my wife, and she's like, yeah, he does remind me of Adam. So I knew it. Jim Brown is way tougher than me, man. Jim, Jim <laughs> but you guys have that like, same kind know. of demeanor, you know, that same kind of chill, and you think alike. Adam, like, Adam, where where would you put Lennox Lewis on your all time list as far as heavyweights? You watch boxing. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavyweight. Well, I, I'm I'm partial to the old school, so you I mean obviously Ali's got to be up there. Um, I mean that's, that's going to be my number one. Lennox Lewis. Oh man, I, you know. You, I, so here's here's the thing. Here's my thing with Lennox Lewis. He's obviously a great. I think he's slightly overrated. Really? I think he's. I do, I do, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because if you if you watch a lot of his fights, like I'm thinking about, like when he fought Tyson or whatever, a lot of his fights he's getting over because he has the reach advantage and he knows how to use it well. But when we saw him kind of go up against like the you know Klitschko, I think he got exposed a little bit. You know what I'm saying because the reach wasn't there and you just he was getting tagged up. You know well, what I'm he, so, he, I mean, he's he's great. He also but, wasn't he wasn't at his peak anymore though. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I get, yeah, I mean, I, I think you got to give him top five. I'm not going to just. No, that, that, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to yeah, say. I, top five. I was going to say yeah, top man, five. Sure. Yeah. But he, he had some holes in his game that I think, you know, a lot of people don't take into account. But yeah, I, I give him top five. Yeah, top five. Sure. All right. All right. As long as you got him in there. Because, yeah, yeah, I mean, I could see him. I could see him ranked anywhere third, fourth, or fifth, you know. I, think I, got, he, I got him right below <laughs> Buster Douglas. <laughs> No, I, th- I, I think you gotta have. I think you gotta have Ali at number one. I think you gotta have Joe Lewis at number two. And uh, after that, I, I think three through five are up for grabs and so on. But, so you're not gonna put Tyson up there? I, 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 lo- I, I love Tyson, but uh, yeah, I love Cust- I love Customato Tyson. I just don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, if if he hadn't if he hadn't gotten rid of Andy Rooney, man, uh, I don't know. I, I, it's see part of it. Part of it is part of you know being an all time great is longevity you know what i mean like like yeah. how, how long can you do it right i mean the klitschkos right, are going until right. they're like a thousand years old you know yeah, muhammad, right. uh, muhammad ali, ali george, yeah. george foreman took yeah, 10 foreman. year took 10 years off and then came back an old man was still knocking dudes out yeah so, dude, george foreman was a beast. Five, to be yeah. honest I think you got to put Foreman top five. And, and, I was just thinking that. that. Yeah, you got to punt Foreman up there. Well, I'd say. I mean, if you look, he's. I mean, he's, the dude did not have. I mean, he had better boxing skills when he came out of retirement than he used to. But he's a. Uh, he's he's the just strong. Guy for for guys for for those of you who don't know much about boxing, you have sort of classic styles like 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 Foreman for me is like the ultimate brawler style, right? The 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 brawler is someone who is has to be able to take tons of damage, and is just massively powerful, right? Uh, right. He d- doesn't have great boxing skills. Doesn't stick and move. He could just if you come in on him, you, he can take the shots, and he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna hit you and stuff. And so that right. that's the brawler type. The boxer is the guy who you know sticks and moves. He he runs up points on you so that he can win by decision if he needs to and so on. Uh, if he yeah. sees it, if he sees an opportunity, he'll move in for it and so on. Uh, the the ultimate boxer is Muhammad. But Ali. you forgot a category. What I'm about to give a category, man. No, no, you forgot the. Other. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah, so 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 there's the the boxer, the outfighter, right? That's like Muhammad Ali. Um, there, it's just having tremendous boxing skills. Um, again, right. racking racking up points, uh, phenomenal. You know, being able to to duck punches and things like that. And then you, you still have forgot a category. Yeah, there is the infighter. The infighter. No, no, no. I'm gonna say it's, the, uh, it's huh? like the no. Okay, the, who's the Dillahunty Dodge of boxing? <laughs> oh, hang on. <laughs> yeah. You know who this is. Yeah. That's just Floyd Mayweather. the whole time. Mayweather. Yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Mayweather, ducking yeah. and dodging. Doesn't yeah. punch, just ducking and dodging. Yeah. So uh <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah, and then you have you have you have well, I have actually thought about applying this to apologetics, right? Because uh uh but no, Sean should do this as part of mixed martial apologetics, explaining oh, yeah, different oh, matter of fact, matter of fact, I should make a video for his channel to help, you know, to help his uh help get, give him a little boost at the beginning, because right now he's at that beginning stage where it's 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 tough. Um uh, but uh yeah, then you have the infighter, right? The guy who he gets in close. You know, the boxer, he stays away, leads with his jab and his right, jab and right, jab and right. Um, uh, an infighter, he comes in with a flurry of like hooks and uppercuts, hooks and uppercuts. And basically the infighter is he gets right up close to you and it's just he's going to throw a flurry of punches until 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 someone drops. And so, yeah, so Tyson is Tyson is kind of the ultimate example of a, of an infighter. And so you have the, it's interesting how these how these um, how these different styles can can match up because the saying is something like you, yeah you could you could correct me if I'm wrong here but it's something like 
uh, infighter beats a boxer, boxer beats a brawler, brawler beats an infighter. Um, meaning, if you were sort of the, if you were sort of the perfect example of that, yeah, the perfect example of that, an infighter is going to get close enough to a boxer to make the boxer uncomfortable, and he's gonna he's just gonna keep he's just gonna keep you know throwing uppercuts and 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 uh, and uh, hooks and stuff like that up close, so the boxer can't pace himself and do what he wants to do. Whereas, if the bo- if the if the infighter tries that against the brawler, the brawler can take those shots, but the brawler is also super strong, and so he's going to just be pounding this dude when he comes in there when he gets in close. Um, whereas the boxer versus the brawler, so there there's your Ali versus uh, versus Foreman, right? The mm-hmm. the boxer is going to outsmart the brawler and come up with a plan to let him wear himself down after a few rounds. And then just rack up points and win on points if he needs to, or if he sees that opportunity, hey, he's wearing himself out. And gosh, man, Ali during that fight with Foreman kept you know, by round six, he was going, it's a, it's a, he's going, this is a bad time to be getting tired, George. This is a bad time to get tired. <laughs> yeah, Yo, so. what, is, what is William Lane Craig? That's what I what do you think William Lane Craig is we're probably Which is he? The politics. I, I feel yeah, like he might the politics. Be, I, 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 yeah, it's a, he's, you got to give, he, he's got to be the Muhammad Ali, man. That's like what a, I was going to say. He's yeah. kind of like Ali. Yeah. Like a, like a swarmer. A swarmer is more of a guy who comes in there and just, bam, 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 just, yeah. just, 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 you know, just right, rattling right, right. off stuff and just never gives you a, gives you a time to, uh, uh, for real, uh, uh, a brawler would, would, might be something more like, I'm not but sure. About, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not sure about this because I haven't thought through it, but a brawler might be more someone like a precept, right? Like, Okay, here's yeah. my position. Okay, yeah, here's my right. position. Go ahead and try to knock me out. You can't. Up, oh, nope, you can't. I can take too much damage. You can't hurt me. You can't hurt my position. Up, oh, you're proving my point. You're proving my point. Everything you're saying is proving my point right now. Um, so it's yeah, really like the side ten is George Foreman basically. It's like mm-hmm. the side ten is George Foreman. Is that, is that what yeah, I remember. Doing? I remember. Holy, Holyfield. Holyfield said because uh, you yesterday we were talking about how hard uh, George Foreman could uh, could punch. Uh, Holyfield Holyfield said you just have to you just have to train to get out of the way and block and stuff like this and he said I was block I was blocking and 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 dodging the entire time and he caught me with one jab right in my face and I thought my face was shattered that's what it felt like it felt like he shattered my entire face and I walked back to my corner I was like what what happened to my face um, but I was like that's that was just a that was a that was a jab from from George yeah. Foreman so the fact anyway the point of that was to show you how awesome Ali was when he came up with the rope dope right that's brilliant and yeah. and he just he spent he spent months working on his core, and so yeah. you've got you've got the I would say the hardest hitting boxer in all of history, and you just say I'm going to go up against these ropes and let this guy pound on me until he wears me out. And we saw how you know we saw what George could do to a yeah. to a heavy That's bag. So yeah, he, he, he used to bag. Remember that video? Yeah, he used to break yeah, he used crazy. to break heavy bags by punch. Yeah. He would, he would break insane. a heavy bag open. Yeah. So anyway. Anyway, that was everyone's boxing lesson for the day. But I'm, I'm right. trying to, I'm trying to. If you guys have comments on how to apply that to, uh, to apologetics, um, the different, hey, um, different styles. Piglet Smith says John McCray is vital. Kitsuchu. I have no idea who that is. Does anybody? Klitschko. Who is oh, that? Oh, Klitschko. Who's yeah, that? Yeah. John McCray. John McCray is uh, Klitschko. Vitali, Vitali. That's what they're trying to say. Is who? So You're, Vitaly, there's two he's, Klitschko. There's yeah, two he's boxers. not saying vital. He's saying Vitaly. Vitaly Klitschko. He left an eye off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who is that? That's, what category is he in? That's one of the Klitschko brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what category? I don't know who they are. They're boxers, man. They're heavyweight boxers. I know boxers. they're boxers, but I'm saying what category do they go in? They're, bo- they're boxers. They're like the Muhammad Ali. They're the, bo- they're, the, like... they're the boxer style. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I got oh, I, I got what you're saying. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Le- Len- Lennox Lewis, boxer, right? These, these can guys. Do, can you do a Ukrainian? Holyfield. uh can you do a Ukrainian accent? Nah, bro. I don't even know. I don't even know what that sounds like in my head. Just, just go. Just go. Just go. I must break you. No, that's. Is that? Is that? Uh, that was Ivan Drago. Drago. I must. Drago. I must break Gosh. you. <laughs> what is? Uh, what is wood? You're probably more of the. Uh, what's my call it? Yeah, well, he's gonna be. I I I, pr- I prefer I prefer the Tyson swarming style. Let me run in you. I don't I don't I don't always yeah. use that. But if I. If I were to pick, if I had to stick with a style yeah. and go for it, that would that's what I would th- I would love that in so apologetics. I'm, ju- I'm judging off your debate with Dillahunty the other day. I, I'm thinking about in particular where you referred to uh, Richard Dawkins as Pope Richard. Yeah, that's 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 a Tyson move right there. You know what I'm saying? He's kind of just coming in <laughs> with a little barbs there. You know what I'm saying? A little infighting there. You know, you refer to <laughs> Pope Richard and you just make a little comments throughout your like. You, they, I can't think of anybody else who's going to throw in jabs like that in their opening statement. You know what I'm saying? Like. 
Imagine a women and Craig referring to you know Dawkins as Pope Richard or something like that. It's, it's, it's <laughs> Craig is well, funny. well, I, I, I was, I was doing. I mean, I was doing that. I did that at one debate with an atheist, and uh, and then the dude ended up throwing Dawkins under the bus. He's like, "Well, I don't think Richard Dawkins is good. And you shouldn't be quoting him." And I'm like, "Hey!" And I stood up and I go, "Hey, we agree on something. Richard Dawkins <laughs> is a big joke. You shouldn't be listening to him." Amen. <laughs> amen to that. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do a new Dawkins video soon, just because. Like, typically, I'm like, "Eh, people have moved on past Dawkins," but there's a new. Uh, a new mm -hmm. interview he did that's gave me all kinds of funny ideas. So I'm gonna do a uh, Dawkins video here soon. By the way, Dawkins is still out here getting it, man. I mean, he's got some residual effect going on, man. man. He's kind of ticked off a lot of people though, like a lot of his uh, leftist uh, people. You know what I mean? Oh, with like the Twitter thing recently with the uh... all kinds of stuff. Yeah, like oh, okay. that. Yeah. Okay. He's got a new interview though where he's like just talking crap, and it's just funny because there's a bunch of funny stuff I can do with it. So. Yeah, buddy. Now, now hang out for real. We just did a whole chain on boxing. That was dope. Yeah. Now we have a bunch of <laughs> now we have a boxing a bunch of boxing comments. Uh, John Buckley said David is Ali. Dilla Hunty is Jerry Quarry. Uh, Quarry Quarry was actually sad because he had that he had that uh you know he had it worse than worse than Ali did for a while. But you know the the problems they have with uh oh yeah because of the uh, getting hit so much. But um, yeah. uh, Jerry Quarry was a white boxer during the seventies, the greatest generation of boxers ever. And so he is mm. kind of like the great white hope for for what, but he was he was awesome. Like the guy could take a beating, but uh, he he had too many problems with cuts. His skin, for some reason, if you hit him right, it would gush. It would start gushing blood. And so uh. the guy the guy could just take a mm. pounding. He was a good he was he was a good fighter. Uh, but he would a, a lot of his a lot of his losses against big opponents were stoppages because even if he was ahead on points and so on to be stoppages because he just ends up bleeding a lot and so it was uh yep yeah. uh, uh hey i just want to say, so i don't know who piglet smith is but they said that dawkins is adrian Bronner, <laughs> which is for anybody who's, who's a box fan i think that's hilarious adrian Bronner's is kind of like a guy who's super cocky always talking trash <laughs> is like way over the top and then like in the big fights he like gets his, his behind handed to him like so it's, <laughs> that's that's adrian Bronner's career so he's like back or night huh Oh, like Zach yeah. Hey, 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 uh, hey, Adam, you you know that uh, Charlie Zelenoff guy? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you ever seen Charlie Zelenoff? Charlie Zelenoff's that guy who claims to be like 487 and 0, and he yeah. runs he runs around, he, he like, uh, he gets the crap beat out of him, but he always claims victory. <laughs> he actually ran up on Deontay Wilder, and Deontay Wilder hit him with a couple, and he went running, and he claimed that he oh, beat he, he claims that he beat Deontay Wilder and stuff like that. <laughs> he's, hilarious. he's hilarious. He's got he's he's clearly he's clearly like mentally ill. There's something wrong yeah, with him. He runs around. With him. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, guys, should we be wrapping this up? Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody said we didn't mention Manny Pacquiao. So before we do, I just want to mention Manny. Pacquiao. Manny, 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 Manny's another infighter, a swarmer, right? So he's he's yeah. a he's a smaller he's a smaller like Tyson style. They're, they're, what's cool about those like about Tyson is they're exciting fights, right? They're 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 usually they're usually not going twelve rounds, right? You so you either you either knock that dude out or you get or you get knocked out. Now, uh, you know as yeah. as Pacquiao got older, you know he couldn't he didn't have that he didn't have the always have that that level of punching power as he did when he was younger and stuff like that. But but. Same idea. That's why. That's why you don't want to see old Pacquiao versus old Mayweather, right? You want to see them both in their prime, and then you get to yeah, see um, the you get to see Mayweather, who's like the ultimate defensive fighter, versus Pacquiao, who's like the ultimate you know the ultimate offensive fighter, and see them see them right. once they get old, and you know one of them's lost his edge, then you know. Like, yeah, 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 right. I've heard, Actually, about all the people who don't like boxing. Pretty, he proclaims Christian. Yeah, somebody said. Uh, some, did you want to go on that question? I saw that too, John. You want to? What's that? that? No, no. Yeah. I just said I feel bad for all the people who don't like boxing. There's a few people in there who's like, "What are you guys talking about?" And then some people oh. are like, "Yeah, because they're like boring." I was like, yeah, I think out, "Man, you know, you never know what's gonna come up." You know what I'm saying? It's <laughs> gonna come up. Yeah, here hey, we God. are, apologists. Yeah. Like we can answer questions for people, and here we are talking about boxing. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh yes, okay. So for anyone who came in late, we we're just this is just a live hangout. So we're kind of just going with it, whatever came up or whatever, uh, whatever questions came up. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. How did we get on boxing? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was your fault. However, however it happened, <laughs> pretty sure it was all you. Um, David, did you lose your patience with Dillahunty? You're the first person to ask me that. Everyone else said, "Wow, you're remarkably calm considering Dillahunty was freaking out." Um, so no. <laughs> He seemed a little snippy. 
I, I felt like uh, I don't know if I mean, did you get that vibe from him? He, he seemed like he was a little snippy that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a video of like, uh, like when, when he, when he asked me, well, what, what does God do? And, and you know, the point is that God gives you kind of moral realism and it gives you a different view of other human beings. And he's like, well, you, you don't yeah. understand what that means, right? And I'm like, okay, well, if I'm asking what, what you are as a human being, then you know, I have the question of like, where you came from, where you are, where you're going, and so on. And he, he, when I pointed out that there's a difference between viewing someone as something eternal. Versus viewing someone as something that's just going to, you know, it's going to die and be extinct. It, it, that does have an effect on on your view of what we are. Uh, right. And then he, then he, you know, f flipped out. He goes, "You're straw manning. That's a straw man. That's a straw man." He started flipping out. But uh, what I said has been said by a lot of atheists over the years, right? And I don't see right. how you get around it, right? Like, you know, Bertrand Russell. Bertrand Russell said it. Uh, in fact, he said any philosophy that's not that's not founded upon this this sort of despair that comes with acknowledging that as individuals and as an entire species we are all, we're all we are we are all destined to perish he said uh, uh, anything any philosophy that's not based that's not grounded on that's doomed to failure right so you can you can mm -hmm. you can fool around and go no everything's great everything's wonderful and you just say it's doomed to failure you know, it's gonna it's gonna wind down and and so on so I want to put something together of like quotes from atheists who said exactly what I said, but they, I mean, they said it in a much, they're atheists who said it in much more extreme fashion and basically mm -hmm. said, title it something like Matt Dillahunty slams Bertrand Russell. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. he's flipping, I mean, he's flipping out. I mean, you got the atheists of the 20th century, they were completely comfortable acknowledging this stuff. You get to the atheists of the 20th, 21st century where they're far more emotional. They're like balls of rage. And they flip out right. when you they flip out when you say something that atheists of the 20th century would gladly acknowledge, and so right, on. Right. So it's uh, it's it's interesting how the atheists now would just completely throw these guys under the bus and uh, and uh, just lose their minds on them. Yeah, yeah, as I understand it, I think that's more of a like it's for like the pop level atheists or you kind of internet atheists or whatever. I mean, I yeah. think the I think the guys who are like, I'm thinking of, for example somebody like a Graham Oppie. Or you know somebody oh, they would hate you know, Dillahunty and them stuff. They would think it's so ridiculous. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah they're, they're more willing to stand the ground and say, hey, look, you know, this is, you know, we, we accept the proposition that God does not exist, and you know, such and such implications from it. Matter of fact, I like that video you and um, IP did, John, on um, the skeptics, or I can't remember how you titled it, but just oh, yeah. basically a strategy where they kind of use skepticism as a, you know, rather than a tool to, you know, kind of highlight truth, is just more of. Um, a stance to avoid truth in a sense. I mean, I don't know if that's yeah. how you term it, but yeah. Yeah, something like that. And that's the thing is like, I just want to keep pointing out the little things that they do that other people are like, I know they're doing something, but I can't figure out what it is. You know what I mean? It kind of like bugs you or whatever. So I just want to keep pointing out these things to make it clear, like what they're doing, you know what I mean? To kind of pull that rug out from under. So that's why I'm always trying to um, expose that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, no, the philosophers like, it, it, still today, the philosophers would completely disagree with like Dill Hunty and all these other people on all, on virtually almost everything. You know what I mean? Because it's not about philosophy anymore on the for the online atheists. And it's bizarre because almost all of the objections today, it seems like, from the online atheists are about morality. They're like moral objections. They're not necessarily they're not philosophical objections or anything like that. They're mainly moral objections. And so like the new online atheists have to have some sort of objective moral standards, you know what I mean? But because it's all about, you know, it's only objective in relation to the end goal is the best that we've seen. Dillahunty probably has the best, um, or, or really cosmic, really, because mm -hmm. Dillahunty's really sloppy with it. But cosmic mm -hmm. has probably the best um, view that you can have for um, athe or for morality on atheism. Um, and it's still not ultimately objective. They're just saying there's objective moves that you can make. Uh, once you have a conclusion and everybody's going towards that same goal and so they're trying to find a unified goal but mm -hmm. to me that's just like practically doesn't mm -hmm. you it's a nice thought but there's no way it would work in reality yeah yep, yep. you know what's kind of interesting about that so like in the context that um i'm, I'm typically typically find myself doing apologetics in you have like so-called you know black atheists you know where you have it's it's atheism with like the cultural packaging you know you kind of get the african-american culture and, and what you find is amongst them there's this kind of under, not actually, I wouldn't even say underline, but it's kind of this ongoing concern that the broader atheist community doesn't care about things like, you know, social justice or whatever things that these these particular, you know, African Americans are concerned about. And so there's like this schism, you know what I'm saying, even within like along racial lines, there's like this kind of schism, 
you know, amongst the atheist community. And I just think that's interesting because, you know, on Christianity, obviously we have a ready-made unifier. I'm saying we have, you know, that we're all, you know, in Christ. I'm saying we're all made in the, in the image of God, you know, to take it further than that. But on atheism, I mean, you really have to either concoct some sort of unifying identity or, you know, maybe presupp- you know, just kind of presume something like, you know, like humanism does. But, you know, it's not really grounded in anything objective it's you know i think there's some arbitrariness there you know but i, th- I just yeah. think that's pretty interesting well they're not they're never talking about objectivity or ontology usually you know what i mean they don't really mm-hmm. care about those things as much so they're usually just talking about subjective experiences all that kind of really matters in their minds in some degree you know so that's where the communication misses yo. each other a lot yo hindu, hindu historian said muhammad meets pennywise in the boom boom room i feel like the feeding on fear thing is something muhammad could relate to um, yeah, I, I think I could actually, I haven't tried it, but I think I could pull off Pennywise. Uh, I, I pulled off the Joker with no practice whatsoever. I think I pulled it off pretty well. So I think I could do a, a Pennywise too. Um, yo, uh, <laughs> this is funny. Isaac Marshall said, David, can you sing the magic backpack song? <laughs> um, but, uh, I'm on, I'm on the computer where I made the magic backpack song. So I think I can play oh. it. I think I could go ahead and play it for you right now. So let's see if the let's see if this thing works. We're gonna have everyone the magic backpack song. If this works, I hope this is not some bad edit or something. But this is what pops up when I clicked on uh, backpack song. All right, let's check it out. Ah, backpack, magic backpack. Hear nothing. You can, backpack, you can hear it, but we can't hear it. Oh, he's right here. We can't hear it. Stacks, stacks, stacks. He's bobbing his head to it and everything. I, don't think, I, don't I wonder if people can hear it. Can't hear it. Just imagine we, I didn't even know it was the backpack. You, you guys, you guys were you guys were rudely talking over <laughs> the magic backpack. You can't hear it. It we was dead silent. Yeah, yeah, I know, but that doesn't mean you have to ruin it for everybody else. But uh, <laughs> yo, 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 that that was funny because uh, I I had to figure out how to do that on my own, right? Because I was like, how am I gonna how am I gonna do how am I gonna just have my lips on the backpack? And so I was thinking about the annoying orange, and they actually had a totally different way of doing it from from what I from what I did. Um, but then I was like, wait a minute, green screening works. What if I just smear green all over green, green makeup, face paint all over my face, except my lips. And then I, and then I do green screen and then all you'll see is my lips. So that's what I did. I, I smeared green, all, I smeared green all over my face and then green yeah. screened it and it doesn't work around the edges. So then I kind of cropped it around to just this area. And, uh, and yeah, it was just green, but yep, it worked. So <laughs> that's dope. That's crazy. Hey, real quick, I have a comment that somebody made and I, I think it was addressed to me. It said for the guy on the right, Yep. It's not avoiding truth generally. It's avoiding certainty that is perceived as unwarranted. And I think they're, they're referring to my comment where I talked about, um, you know, just, you know, the atheists, um, kind of how they take the position today. And, um, I, you know, to, to that, I would say that, I mean, honestly, mo- most apologists, uh, at least in the circles that I roll in, I don't think anybody's really pressing for like some sort of psychological certainty. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, if I'm going to make this argument and you've got no mental capacity to resist coming to believe you know, the gospel or something like that, you know. Um, So I I don't think either side, generally speaking, is pressing for some sort of psychological certainty. But again, I I would stand on what I said. I mean, about, I think it it is a a truth avoidance in a sense, because you've got people who, for example, you know, this whole debate about, you know, what atheism is, you know, I mean, to be honest, I mean, we, we know what atheism is, classically speaking, and kind of this notion today when it comes to, oh, well, it's just a lack of belief in God and so on and so forth. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm this is just my perspective, and, and maybe you guys disagree. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. But I think that it is a, in, an attempt to avoid taking on the burden of proof, you know, with respect to making a claim about God's non-existence. You know, and I think that it's kind of an attempt to avoid, you know, conversations that would direct one to truth if, if somebody was sincerely engaging in it. So that's that's my that's my view, you know. Yeah, it absolutely is, I think. I think, by and large. Yeah. I mean, why else would you not? You know what I mean? So, And then, yeah, you got problems like, well, what's the, what's the person that believes that God doesn't exist? What do you call him? You know what I mean? A person that says God does not exist, you know? And would they probably say, oh, an atheist can be both or whatever. But then I'm like, okay, then don't get mad if people say that atheism is the belief that God does not exist, you know? So, right. And just to give a, a clear example, like so, so often, like, one of the kind of taglines today or you know it's like the slogan kind of time kind of thing today is they will they'll say well atheism isn't a worldview or you know something along those lines and you know whether you take it to be a worldview or not i mean if, if you believe 
if you take it that God does not exist, there are implications that follow from that. You know what I'm saying? And so we're so if we're talking about those implications, i.e., I would say that you know morality you know can't be grounded and things of that nature. I mean, whether you take atheism to be a quote worldview or not, if you take the, the proposition that God does not exist to be true, then yeah, there's going to be you know implications that follow from that, and and some of those implications have to do with morality. Some have to do with you know how we value folks and you know function in the world. So. You know, I, I just think it's just kind of a, a way of, of kind of doing that little dodge thing when people, it, it becomes a conversation stopper. Like you don't really get anywhere. Really. Yeah, uh, Greg Kokel's uh, newer book, what's it called? Uh, the Story of Reality. Yeah. I like how he kind of maps it out where he's like, basically everybody has a way of that they're seeing the world. Um, and so you have these different puzzle pieces, you know, that um, can make um, your view of the world make more sense than others. And you have these internal components and external components. And then you're comparing different views of the world like that. So regardless, whatever you want to say about atheism, there's a way that atheists see the world and they don't include God into the way they see the world. So in that aspect too, you can compare that view compared to the theistic worldview and then kind of go from there. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Got a request from Muhammad meets Muhammad Ali. <laughs> oh, snap. That'd be funny. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why are you so white? <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you my, my that the story about my grandma being Muhammad Ali? Did I ever tell you that? Man, your grandma didn't mean no Muhammad Ali. Come on, dude. It's like she she sure did. No, you, you're, sure like, did. you're like you're like you're like uh, you're like the uh, guy in Coming to America. The barber said, uh, "Let me tell you about the time I met I met Dr. Martin Luther King." Man, woke up to <laughs> me, hit me in my chest. I said, <laughs> "I fell down the ground." I said, "Dr. King." He said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were someone else." <laughs> That's a good reference. No, for real, but it was funny because like I mean she's obviously I mean she's passed on now, but she used to tell the story about like her and some of her lady friends were walking around some park and he comes jogging by. You know what I'm saying? He's like and he, it was just like a real quick meet and greet, like, you know, you know, hello ladies, something like that, and she keeps on he keeps on going. And it's funny because every time she would tell the story, she would always say, And Adam, he was a good looking man. And then my granddad would just kinda of like crumple his newspaper and like be upset like that. <laughs> that was gonna be me like a thousand times. <laughs> hey, uh, we keep you in the comment. Um, you guys want to touch on it from uh, Yoshua Perba says, hi, how do you explain the connection from creator to Jesus to people who are not familiar with the Bible? Thank you. So I think yeah, what he's asking, I think from the older comments, he's saying like you have like the Kalam and these arguments. And then how do you get to Jesus from them? Or is there a way to get to Jesus from them? Uh, what say you would? Um. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I think you you have to bring in the history of Jesus and and the information we know about Jesus. But uh, this this would be part of a cumulative case, right? Um, if you build a, a Kalam cosmological argument, uh, fine tuning arguments, biological design, a moral argument, whatever you know, whatever you put into there, you're 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 ruling out certain alternatives, right? But, hey, all these, all these other alternatives that do not involve uh, a creator or a moral foundation, things like this, uh, these, these can't account for reality. These can't account for our experience. And so you need something more. And so, but the question, the question remains, wait a minute, if you've got a creator who created the universe and fine tuned it so that we can be alive and who is also the ground of all goodness and uh, the, you know, the the one who gives us moral obligations and so on. If you've got all that, that that gives you that gives you theism. But the question is, has he shown us more? And so we say he has shown more, and here's why. And so then you then you get to Jesus. So that would be my view. Yep. Yeah, I think you need the the Bible or uh, history or both in order to talk about jesus otherwise yeah i mean but you do have like some instances in um for muslims and stuff in other countries and stuff like that that will have like visions of jesus and stuff like that and convert and stuff like that too so in um situations like that um it is possible i think the um other people can convert without having direct access to the bible or something like that all right guys mm -hmm. well we are pushing two hours now so um unless you got something else we should probably wrap up yeah. All right. So uh, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, John McRae, final words. Remind everyone where to get a hold of you and uh, what you got coming up. 
Final words, final words. Yeah, so uh, go to What Do You Meme. Uh, just search it, and you will find my channel. And, um, yeah, you guys, I got a lot of stuff coming up that I'm excited about. I've got, like, two big projects in my head, and I'm still trying to get things worked out since I just went full-time, getting a bunch of stuff worked out, like the business side of it all and stuff. So that's taking a lot of time right now. But um, I hope to have it done here. I'm getting towards the end of it now. So um, then I'm going to be cranking out videos like crazy. I'm trying to. So anyways, uh, yeah, and tomorrow night I have a live stream with Sam Shamoon. So you guys can come join that. It'll be at 8 p.m. Eastern on my channel. So, yeah, good to see everyone. All right, Adam. Yeah, first of all, somebody, uh, John, what was it? Adam, when are you going to fix that wall behind you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was well, looking here, you know, it's, it's falling apart. But I was working real quick trying to get my kids their dinner before I was I set up my stuff, so I didn't get everything set up how I wanted. He's outside, but, actually. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He lives in the street, kind of, so. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the elements. But, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, likewise, man, I've got some projects coming up. As a matter of fact, this coming week, um, I've got a guest. I've got, uh, you know, Braxton Hunter is going to be on. I know Dave is going to have him on on Monday. And um, I'm going to have him on on Thursday, you know, so y'all definitely um, skip David's, you know, and then, you know, come check mine out, you know, for sure. <laughs> uh, but no, um, so I've got him coming up and um, I'm actually trying to step my game up as far as doing a uh, at least one live uh, per week. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get up to two, but right now I'm doing one. So I've got a couple topics planned out. Um, one in particular, uh, I've got a um, for anybody who's familiar with the Hebrew Israelites, um, I have an argument against uh, their identity claim. That um, me, me, me and Vocab Malone, we did like a, a tag team debate and I dropped it a couple years ago. And uh, just the other day, I, I kind of polished it off, dusted it off, so to speak. And I'm going to be kind of, you know, presenting a, a, a strengthened version of that. So I'll probably drop that uh, next week. And I've got some stuff coming up on atheism after that. I got about a good three or four subjects, you know, mapped out. So y'all check me out at True ID. It's T R U I D Apologetics uh, here on YouTube. Oh, Adam, I'm gonna. I plan on releasing our second video sometime next week. By the way, probably too. So, just so you oh, know. Oh, dope. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. We did uh, two on um, atheism and whatnot. And um, yep. actually, I just I was part of the Cyber City Conference uh, last week, and um, I did a, a whole you know hour um, with with different versions of the uh, the moral argument. Um, which I think militate against uh, atheism. So anybody who likes those videos that we did, you probably want to hop over and uh, you know check that out. You know? Oh, uh, Wood, Radical Love commented and said the David Wood documentary. Yeah, what is going on with the David Wood documentary, no, I, David Wood? I told you why you need to he hold off on that till something else happens. I know. So, no, guys, that, yeah. that, is, that, is, that delay is not on John McRae. That is on something I told him he needs to, uh, he needs to wait on to make it a little bit more epic. But uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be dope, though. I'm yeah. excited for it. <clears throat> yeah, all right. My favorite. All right, so uh, everyone subscribe to John's channel, uh, especially, you know, because, you know, some of these live streams uh, coming up, especially tomorrow and so on, he's going to be having live streams over on here, and he just makes uh, just makes good videos. And subscribe to Adam's channel, because uh, he's going he's, to he's gonna blow up. It's a matter it's a matter of time. And uh, as Fred Sanford pointed out, tell all your friends about Adam. Let's try to get him up to 5,000 subscribers. Um, that'll be a pretty cool, pretty cool milestone. And, and Adam, you're... Yeah. Once five, once once you got five thousand, all the rest is easy, man. The first five thousand is hard. I'm getting there, man. The next five thousand is easy. All right, thank we'll you. Call it yep. Project e the five thousand. Yeah. <laughs> all right, <laughs> thanks everyone for joining us uh, again. John's channel uh, tomorrow, and Braxton Hunter will be with me on Monday. And by the way, I have a cool video for you tomorrow. Catch you later. Peace. Peace.